In five, four, three, two, one. Hola, everybody. Hola, como como estás? Está, mijos. Hey, do you speak Spanish though, for real? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you, why'd you have to say hell nah for because, it, Because, boy, your boy is so whitewashed. It's not even funny, dude. What really? the fuck? How your Spanish you know, is kind of funny, Your parents Spanish? So, my papa is Salvadorian. My mom is whiter than a motherfucker, right? I guess the story is... Did you guys hear that? Yeah. <laughs> that was Yo, like... What I was, was, that? I was <laughs> ripping the fuck out, dude. <laughs> that like came from my throat. This will left the I thought I was the only one that said that. It's <laughs> not like you ate a frog and it died in there, For that, real, yeah. dude. <laughs> um, so anyway, so my mom, my dad's Salvadorian. This is a story I was told. He was speaking to me in Spanish when I was a kid. I was starting to learn it, but then I was having a hard time speaking English when I was in school. So he stopped. So mm. I, I mean, I, I couldn't really speak English that well either, though. But yeah. they they put you in ESL class, and that shit all evens out. It was, yeah, I wish he wouldn't have stopped. But you know, my dad wasn't like my dad. I don't know. Maybe. My dad wasn't really a citizen. A citizen. He, he was able to work here. I thought you were about to say my dad was really dumb. No, no, no. He, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I think he probably felt a different type of way, right? He probably was like, oh, I want to make sure my son can speak English. Like, like American, yeah, American. Um, so not my parents, dude. Yeah, so that's I, how my parents. I wish work. I knew Spanish. Like obviously, I know like the stupid shit, right? Like pinchy and pendejo and no mama's way. And all that shit. Yeah. yeah, all that type of shit. But I cannot speak Spanish. It's, it, a lot of parents have this uh, weird fear of like their kid not being able to speak English. Here's the thing: you live in fucking America. The yeah. kid is going to learn how to speak English either no matter what. way, yeah, no yeah. matter what. And especially in this country, when it comes to jobs, yeah, and kind of standing out, being bilingual at an early age when you absorb knowledge the best is. Is the best thing on yeah. earth. I know some kids that are born here that have like foblish, bro. Like they speak with the craziest accent. Of yeah. All time. Bet you still understand them though. Nah, dude. Really? Like it's bad. Okay. Well, shout out to this girl. Let's just, I don't, okay. This is a girl in <laughs> I high got school. One, though. <laughs> this, is, this is a girl in high school, right? Yeah. Let's just her, say her name. I'm not going to say her name because I think, because Sacramento is a very small town. So mm. everybody, and I, I, you know, I think we're still friends. And they're on lockdown right now, too. So she probably going. Yeah, she probably for sure, right? But this girl can <laughs> cannot speak English to save her fucking life. So I went back to SAC uh, a few years back, and then we met up again, right? When you're around somebody who has fucked up English and your homies and you're just kicking it every day, you, you understand it. Yeah. Like, you somehow decipher that shit when mm-hmm. they speak. I saw her, like, a few years back at a, at a Christmas party that we have. This I thought this bitch had CTE. Like she, had, she was talking like James Tony. She was over, she was over here. She was like David, so you been talking like that. I was like, I was like, hold on a second. What the fuck is she saying? David's like this. <laughs> Wait, uh, what? Dog. Huh? What? And as she's talking, Wait, one yeah. of my homegirls, like she's really good friends with her, she's like punching me in the leg because I'm trying not to laugh in her face <laughs> because I couldn't understand a oh, fucking shit. word she's saying. Well, and you've been gone for so long. I just, I didn't. You're just like you're not used to her the way she speaks. I didn't realize her English was so bad, and mm. that even goes back to this other homie. His name is. We'll just call him JP. JP has a thick Filipino accent. Had no fucking idea. Yeah. Because I'm just around it all the time. We all know someone like that. Yeah. You no. know? Like, oh. Akko. Oh, Akko. Oh, Akko. <laughs> oh, that's My right. My boy, I love Akko to death, but sometimes he says shit. I'm like. Yo, shout out to Akko. I love Akko. I just don't know what he says sometimes. But at, when I was training with him more frequently, I started to be like, I, I know what he's saying. Right? Akko, Akko is the most famous man in Pasadena. Dude, he's. Everybody, everybody loves knows him, Akko, dude. bro. I think everybody in Hawaii knows who he is, I too. Know. And he's not even from Hawaii, dog. Dude, Akko, that's the crazy part. He's so too. nice that he knows everybody. Dude, so. It's one weird. Of the, so, Elliot. Shout out to the homie, Elliot. He was in Texas, and uh, he was going to school out there. And Akko is Micronesian. Mm-hmm. He met and Elliot when he, while he was in Texas. He met this dude who was Micronesian, and he goes, "Hey man, that's crazy! Like I only know one other Micronesian dude, and he's back in California." And the Micronesian guy in Texas goes, "Hey, is it Akko? Akko Harper?" Oh my! <laughs> and he goes, "Yeah, dude, what the fuck? Like this dude is Akko well known is one everywhere. of the nicest dudes I've ever met. Love Super Akko. cool. He kind of sounds like the one Cajun dude in Bobby Boucher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, everybody knows dude. who the fuck that is. Akko's the man. One of the so Akko is a coach that trains at Fight Academy. He's a really good coach. <laughs> 
I mean, he's a really good dude. Like, probably one of the most, like, he'll he'll literally give you his t-shirt off his mm-hmm. back. And I've he seen has. him. He'll literally give you his tie shorts off of his body. He's like, oh, you I've like these? Here, take them. Yep, I've yeah, seen him do it. And he'd be like, no, bro, put your pants back on. I love you. <laughs> his dick's <laughs> out. Second, yeah, your dick's All out. butt-ass naked. I can see your Micronesian dick, and that's not that cool. <laughs> but my homie's, uh, he was like, yo, dude, I see this Mexican dude at <laughs> LA Fitness, and he has he's always playing ball, and he's always wearing a fight academy hoodie. Do you mm-hmm. know who he is? And I was like, I have no idea. That's like and the he, worst description. Yeah. A Mexican dude with a fight. Yeah, he goes hoodie. bald head, <laughs> kind of older. I should have done that voice. It's fucking up my throat. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and he goes, but he sounds Hawaiian. And I'm like, oh, Akko. Boom, Akko. Mm-hmm. That's exactly who, who it is. But everybody knows the dude. He's Actually, the you know, best dude around. Akko has his fights on fucking YouTube. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. seen him. I've no, watched him so many times. Choke somebody out and shit, put yeah. him in an arm bar stuff. He put him in like the weirdest fucking arm bar too. From, yeah. For my memory. But like. Yeah. And, and everybody in the crowd is going bananas. Dude, he probably had memory. like 90, 100 people there and shit. That's not even a real number that. and shit. I just but made that shit up. <laughs> 90, 100. 90, 100. 90, 100. Dude. That's yeah. like, that's a catch up, And that's an Akko, that's an Akko number right there. I, know, <laughs> shit. I love Akko though. But shout out to Akko. Yeah. I can't even imitate how he, how he sounds. Nah, brother. Yeah, it's just brother is what we got it. It's brother. He's brada. all right, Alex, right, brother? Like yeah. he'll be saying something. Like when I was at the gym, he'd be say something and then finish it with right, Alex, and I'd just be like, "Yeah, true." true. Akko also saw me when I was like the biggest, and he would always say that he would see me get smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm. The first time that I kind of experienced probably how he's kind of liking his classes was when I have a video of me learning how to do a switch kick, and he was using the kick shield for the first time, mm-hmm. and then just Akko just screaming in the back, "Come on, come on, <laughs> yeah. come on!" Yeah. Dude, ultimate hype man. Dude, man, dude the best. Go, go take Akko's class at Fight Academy. Like I think it's Monday when after, well, after the Corona, yeah, yeah, yeah. And make sure you don't got Corona when you go. Yeah, but that dude runs such a good group class. Like mm-hmm. everyone goes, and it's on like a Monday, Wednesday at noon. Yeah, Monday, Everybody's Wednesday, there. Monday at like eleven, house. and then Wednesday at noon. Like I people think. like him so much. I've seen the same people there even after we left Fight Academy. They mm-hmm. still attend yeah. that class, and they've been yeah. there for two years, and they were already there before I was. Mm-hmm. That's how much they love Akko. Yeah, yeah. Love he's Akko, the man, dude. dude. He's the man. Love Akko so much. But we, but today's topic, and we're actually gonna talk about this motherfucker's love life, dude. Let me tell you something, man. You know, I've always talked <laughs> about on podcasts how sometimes with people. Like they're they tend to be a little too I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> like, this dude That's is how he the talks most. To girls. He this like, I'm is the most timid human being when it comes to women, and I don't understand why. <sighs> but then like, he could lift seven hundred pounds off the. Why ground are you with, like, so scared speed. of women? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I don't know. <laughs> I can't answer that for you. I don't know. Dude, can, dude. Can, I, can I just say I'll speak for Alex. I think for Alex, he's such a good, nice guy. He doesn't want to come off as weird, creepy. Yeah, creepy yeah. to girls. So it's like 40 year old virgin where he's like, I respect women so much, I completely stay away from them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, low key, that kind of true though. You know what like, I mean? No, nah, I don't know. Dude. Let me let me just tell you. This, I think that's part of let it. Let me dude. just tell you this quick scenario, right? And mind you, I'm not a, I'm not a savant when it comes to women either, right? But I feel like I can navigate myself away away around a conversation. <laughs> well, that I can anybody pick up could do a little better. Better than you know than our me. boy Alex right here. So <laughs> Alex, like you just, don't even take the shot. Like case boy. in point, case in point, real quick. There was Alex was supposed to go out on a date with this girl, right? And so can he? Oh, dude. And this then story is my favorite. She says that her car isn't working. Her car breaks down or whatever. And he's like, okay, cool. So now, typically, what a guy would say if he has a functioning car, and what she's actually hinting at is, hey, my car's broken down. Maybe her car's not even broken down because what she actually wants is for the guy to come. Pick her up. My man, what did you say to her? All right. So uh, let me let me no, 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 no. just answer All the right. question. What did you say to her in the response after she said, my car's not working? I said, All right, if we need to reschedule, we can reschedule. <laughs> 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 hey, but there's backstory, no. <laughs> nah, nah, bro. There's, you don't need backstory for that. No, nah, there's, there's no not really backstory. that much backstory. No, I know, but there's no backstory. But actually, if you thing. explain the backstory, it'll make it even funnier, dude. Well, the whole thing for me is like when we set up this date, <laughs> she hit me up. Well, she hit me with that, like, oh, I'll meet you there. So in my head, immediately I'm like, okay, she doesn't want me to pick her up. That's what I thought. So I'm like, all right, fuck, right. So then all this shit happened with her car, and she's like, yeah, you know, my car's this, my car's that, la, la, And I'm just like, all right, then, bet. Like, I guess if we have to, <laughs> we have to reschedule, right, what is your schedule? And then her response was, uh, yeah, right. So. 
I want me to finish the story? Want me yeah. to tell? <laughs> Bro, tell the story, dog. So, then, so yeah, so um, it was funny because I was with Nick and David during this time. We <laughs> we had just went to, it was like Chinese New Year, right? Or some shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so then I remember telling him in the car, like, oh, and even both of them, I even texted my homie Patrick and he was like, hey, offer to pick her up. I'm like, nah, nah, she <laughs> wants to drive, so I'm not going to no, offer to pick her up. Bro. He was so set on that too. Yeah. So like later on, uh, the restaurant we were supposed to go to I actually went with my mom, right, to go eat. And I posted a picture and she responded to it. And I do this a lot too. What did, like, she, what did she say? She was. She just said, "Damn, right." And I do this a lot. Like in my head, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna go for it. Let me see what happens. And I do that. And then I'd say about ninety percent of the time, I still don't do it. But like, there's like a ten percent that I do it. And then so I was like, "Fuck it. I'm gonna see what she says." So I'm like, "Yeah, man. I guess I could have just offered to pick you up." Her response was, "Yeah, I definitely would have went if you did." <laughs> I was like, I was like, uh, 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 shit, uh, 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 damn fuck, shit. Dog, that's exactly what she was. That's exactly what she was hinting at, and that's the funny part. It's like that's that in and of itself encapsulates how you are with women, which is so yeah, fucking dude. funny. I got, I get all my girls that I've gotten. I've gotten so lucky with because they started. Like I've never. Yeah, I've never had to like start the relationship. The girl like always came on to me and like they kind of started it up. So I'm like, fuck, this is cool. Well, only problematically <laughs> speak. And the reason why <laughs> I, I crack up at this is because he talks about like his interaction with women, right? And it's it's so odd because of how awkward it is because <laughs> he can't get out of his own fucking head. Yeah, which we always talk about this in this podcast where there's a human being where I, I, I get messages. It's not yours is actually mild compared to some of these other mm -hmm. kids, but Sometimes like you have these thoughts in your heads that kind of just grow into this weird, weird thought of how bad things are going to happen. And it, and it never, ever gets that way. And it's also we know who you are and we know You're you fine. as a person. And it's like, dude, you are so overthinking it yeah. for you. I'm not scared well, of anything. That's what that's what I'm saying. But it's pussy. Like, <laughs> but, I, but talking to girls, I don't know. I remember okay, so life, when, when we, this guy, his first fight, right? <laughs> when right. he found out, when he told me who he was fighting, he was like, oh, I'm fighting this big ass black dude. In my head, I was like, oh shit. And he showed me who the guy was and I was like, oh man, this guy is 6'4". Alex is like 5'8", 5'7". Five, <laughs> five, six, five, seven. Five, six, and five. I was like, yo, this motherfucker is big as shit. And in my head, I was like, all right, bro, like, this is going to be a trip. But when I was like, how you feel? He goes, I'm fine. And usually when I hear people say I'm fine, I usually don't believe it. But this time I was like, <laughs> oh shit, this dude is actually like chill. So it made me feel way more relaxed. But the fact that this dude is so calm <laughs> when he's going to fight another human being in front of like hundreds of people. And then he can't even be like, hey, I'll pick you up. I'm like, what are we doing, dude? <laughs> Dog, I don't know. It's That's how I've always that's been. That's the most ridiculous think, thing yeah, I've ever heard I think in my it's life. that. I don't know. It's like I've never been confident in myself in my looks. Uh, basically, it was my looks. Like growing up, like I was like, I, I don't you feel attractive. I was always kind of chunky. I just never had the confidence. So like talking to girls was always something where it was terrifying to me. And there would be so many situations where like, like if someone else was watching it, they'd be like, yo, that was like your opportunity. And I would just, it would just well, go. What, what are you scared of though is the question. You know what? Honestly, I think I've been scared so long. I don't even know what I'm scared of. <laughs> <laughs> best answer ever, dude. dude that's that's like, the dopest best answer. answer. I, I think it's that like was everything. pure honesty. Yeah, think, straight up. Straight I think up. it's everything. It's like, you know, growing up, I was scared of getting rejected. I was for some reason scared that they were going to say no and then everybody was going to find out and then I'm the laughing stock of, oh, this girl turned them down. The laughing stock. See, see now this is what yeah. I want to bring up and I knew <laughs> that shit was going to come up. Now, I'm going to use this girl as an example. I'm not going to say her name. But she was saying something very similar to this and then you have this issue that a lot of people have and take this with a grain of salt, you're not that fucking important. <laughs> like, yeah, nobody, no. nobody fucking cares. He's told me the same mm -hmm. thing. The, and, and, and it's so This true. is what I always tell people. This is my saying now. It's like, you're, an, you are an important human being, but you're not that fucking important. Yeah. And that's the yeah. biggest thing that people have to take away from this. It's yeah. like, you do this, right? A girl rejects you. It's same, aha, you move on. It yeah, is what it real. is. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen. But a lot of the times when some guys get rejected, if they're not used to getting rejected, like your boy here, <laughs> <laughs> scab, <laughs> it, it eats away at you. Mm -hmm. you. You start going to the thought of like, damn, like I just embarrassed myself. She's going to be talking shit about me to her fucking friends about that, this fucking hey, loser guy. Yeah, that, See, that was always my thing. And like, I already know. Yeah, I already it, know. it was always my thing. I was always so nervous about that. And it was just like came down to looks, right? Like I was like, oh, I don't look good with my shirt off. Like, 
I, like in my God. head when I was younger, I'm like, I, how am I supposed to date this girl? And then like eventually, like if I have to take my shirt off in front of her, I won't even have the balls to do it and shit. It would make no, me so got, nervous. You just gotta fuck in the dark, man. And so, I know, but there were certain times I remember, and it was just shit that would happen to me, right? That would like, I wasn't good at reading these cues, so I would think that these girls were into me. And I was completely wrong. And I remember I remember in high school, my senior year is when I finally lost some weight, right? I was working out and stuff. So I started feeling more confident. And then finally, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking try this shit, right? I'm going to ask a girl out, whatever like that. <laughs> you just took your shirt off right in front of her. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, you see my chest. Um, so like, I remember what it was. I won't say the girl's name. I still I, I still know her and everything like that. But Say her name. Say her name. No. What is it? No. It's Marie. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Starts with an A. Uh, if people from my old school know, like my, my homies will know. But anyways, like it was one of those dances, you know, like they always yeah. have like 45 fucking dances, right? It was my senior year and I was in shape and she like wanted to start working out with me and we were talking a lot more. Like I was going to her house. I'm like, oh, she's into me, right? So I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm doing on this day. I was one of the only people that had a car, so I would I was taking her home one day. And I stopped, and I asked her out to the dance. And this was her response. And this is what I've always been terrified of my whole life. After I asked her, it was, I'll, um, I'll have to let you know. Hey. And I just remember getting my face, like I was so embarrassed. My face was so hot, oh. and my body was so hot. My hands started sweating and shit. And I was just like, oh, okay, for sure. And she got on my car, and I felt like the biggest dumbass in the world driving home. <laughs> like I was so pissed off at myself. I was like, you're fucking stupid. Why'd you fucking ask a lot her? Of, a lot of people can relate to that feeling. Yeah, yeah and I was like, why'd you, you ask her? Why'd you fucking do that? I got a story like that too with Tiff. Yeah, and then so what, <laughs> what made it worse, right, is like one of the kids we hung out with, the reason why she was saying that is because the other kid asked her and she wanted to go with him instead. So she Ooh. said yes to him and he was friends with our group. So I was just like, fuck, man. See, but if you, if you, yeah. the funny thing is, <laughs> that, that made the me way you more. tell, the way you tell this story, it's like it happened yesterday. Yeah, I know. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, so it's still, I still remember that shit. Saying, so it still affects you. Yep. Here's the thing. When you tell that story to me, all I hear was, this guy asked the girl out and she just got asked out before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> true. That's it. But the way you uh, describe it sounds like like a fucking kung fu movie, <laughs> right? Where some shit was about to go down like, and the super villain came. Dark. Yeah. <laughs> the night came. The wind was Your story, blowing. you told that story like Kill Bill, dude. Yeah, it was yeah. literally you asked the girl out to a date, but she uh, was already called for. <laughs> You're the That's size. it. <laughs> That's all that it is. Dude, there's so many missed opportunities I know of that I just, I never had the balls. And still to this day, like I even make jokes to you. I'm like, hey, invite this person to this. I'm yeah. like, hey, let me just tell you this, right? My best friend, my best friend did the most fucked up thing ever. So one of the homegirls <laughs> um, went up to him, right? <laughs> so this is a girl that I have that's within our group. She's fucking mm. weird. Still weird to this fucking day. She knows who she is. If you're listening to this, <laughs> bitch, you're fucking weird. She's a, a fucking oddball. She's like, right? true. <laughs> she had a she. I mean, she had a crush on everybody in the group. That's how weird she was. Like yeah. this girl, just she talk about she likes shoot, what she likes. You talk about shooting your shot. She would shoot her shot to everybody. Like so. You're one of our one of friends. our friends went up to my best friend and then asked her, asked him. He go, she goes, hey, so she so I have a friend, blah blah blah, like this girl's name. She she needs a she needs a date to prom, right? This motherfucker on the spot goes, ugh, like that <laughs> dog. She's standing right behind him. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> so you, you want to hey, dude, dude? That, that's like that's what I would be terrified of happening. Oh. So I mean, you talk about your situation. Ooh. Your situation is not even bad. Fuck, the men, li- you say ill when you eat food that's accidentally spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, I mean? what, what 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 happened after that? What happened? After she just that? stood there and then she kind of laughed it off because she's a very awkward girl. But I'm pretty sure she started, you know, cutting her hair in a room. Yeah, <laughs> that know? used to be me, dude. Like I used to be like, oh, ha, ha, ha. like oh yeah, totally, and then just be like. Oh, you fuck. <laughs> now, I don't, yeah, and I think I think because of the way a lot of my relationships were, they weren't like the best relationships. But to you, be in. but you still had relationships. I know, and you've, low- had, you've had like eight different girlfriends, like long term. And I don't mean yeah. to like, I don't, I don't. And here's the thing too: when we were talking about this earlier, he was talking about this other girl that he was talking about. I'm not sure if it was the same girl, but mm. he was like, "Hey, I'm so nervous around her." Blah blah blah. And I saw a picture of her, and I'm not saying that she's not beautiful, but what I'm, <laughs> but what I'm saying is. She was a little whack. Yeah, I know. And and what I mean by whack, I mean she just looked like a very beautiful average girl. <laughs> hey, dude. And I get told this all the time, right? Because 
I don't have, I have zero game. When it comes to girls, I have zero game. We're it, gonna do a scenario right now. Yeah. Nick, you're the girl right. and Alex, you're you. I'm, I'm already like nervous. And, I'm and already I, nervous, I'm sweating. <laughs> 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 Rowdy said girl, I'm like, fuck, it's kinda hot. <laughs> Let's try this again. So this He's is like, a scenario. Do first? <laughs> now we gotta, we gotta do a scenario because we gotta fix these habits right now on this Shit. podcast. Here we go. So uh, Nick, you are a girl <laughs> yeah, yeah. at uh, Mission Fitness. Okay. Right, that was good. Now you, now you eyeing him real quick, kind of, and you could kind of yeah. notice that she's looking at you. And Nick, just, you were going to ask him about workout advice. Now this right here, I'm giving you a scenario at a clear sign that she's interested in you because she walked over to you and asked you about workout advice when there's a thousand other people in this gym working out. All right, and Ready? go. Hey Alex, uh, I just know you're really strong, and yeah, um, thanks. I like I see you squat, so I was wondering if you could just help me out with like my squat because it's like you know it's like not that good. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like what what's wrong with your squat? Like what are you feeling is incorrect with it? I just feel like the bottom. I just can't get the hole that well. So if you could just help me. Yeah. So here I'll stand in the front just so it's not awkward or anything. I'll stand <laughs> in the front and watch you do your squat so I can go ahead and fix your cues. Well, well, I feel like you should probably stand behind me because it's the way it's pretty heavy. So you should. Well, later me. let's lighten it down a little bit just so you can do it yourself and I can watch. But I think you should still stand behind me. In, but I won't be able to me. check your form. So right now, <laughs> so right now, if Alex sat up from the seat, that seat would be orange from the sweat. <laughs> hey, dog, no this, yeah, hey, you want to feel this rash cloud I'm wearing? <laughs> <laughs> it's just sweaty. No, so here's the thing. Th this is why that scenario wouldn't really work for me because immediately in my head, I wouldn't you know that You go coach mode. You I, go yeah, coach mode. Coach mode. I wouldn't know that she's into me. So I wouldn't even, can, I fine. wouldn't be able We're to. We're changing the scenario. No, no, hold on, hold on. I'm yeah. like, fuck, no more scenarios. Is there any other time where you could think in your head or possibly, because I know guys always think like, oh dude, she was totally into me. Oh yeah. But like, has there been times where a girl has approached you for like coaching advice and you in your head, you're like, maybe she was into me or yes. maybe she was like a cry for just kind of talking to There's you. There's been a couple of times for that. And like, I was like, fuck, because you know, the girl was attractive and I like, they thought they were cool. And I was like, all right, I fucked that chance up because I went straight into coach mode. But what you were kind of leading to, I was saying yes, was that there's been one time in my life and it just happened where I was like, oh, that girl was like. And it was like a clear sign. <clears throat> yeah. So basically we're talking whenever like that conversation comes down to where it's like, it's coming to an end. Right. And she starts asking me like questions and stuff and it comes to an end. She's like, yeah. And my friend Jesse's there. Right. And I'm like, yeah. And then we just start staring at each other <laughs> and it's about eight seconds go by. And then she goes. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I'll, I'll see you around. I was like, yeah, I'll definitely see you around. I want you to fucking go outside and then lay in front of a car. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but so listen, right? I, I fucking, let me finish I, this I, story. No, let me tell you. No, I, I, let me just say this. Okay. In, in my history of dating, because of how weird I look as a human being, <laughs> that has never happened to me. It's like, uh, yo, I've here's the thing. Never, it's like ever. I, I, maybe one girl did that ask told me straight up that she liked me right mm. and that girl was that weird girl that i was talking about <laughs> <laughs> and that's the type of women yeah. like i've never ever ever had that happen to me yeah. yeah so she did it right and then she left and then my homie jesse's like yo what are you what are you doing dude she wanted you to ask for her number i was like is that and this is my response is that what that was <laughs> Hey, I told him, I was like, hey, literally, this was my reaction, was that right? What that was? So we were talking. I told him, I, was, I thought that's what that was. This is how bad I am, right? So we're talking and in my head, when that pause came, this is what was going on in my head. Fuck, what do I do? 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 Until she said, talk. until she said, all right, well, I'll see you around. I'm like, okay. And in my head, right when she left, I was like, damn, I think she wanted me to like ask her for her number. And then immediately Jesse's like, what are you doing, dude? She wanted you to ask for a number. I'm like, is that what that was? This is what happens. Have, have you seen this shit in, in like in a cartoon where as she says stuff, he's talking in his head. He goes, I think she wants me to talk. And then when you look and he gets out of it, it's nighttime. Yeah, <laughs> That's what happened. Dude, that, like the that little pause felt like an eternity because she were just sitting there staring at each other. And well, I was do, like, you, do you still see her? No. She's married with kids now with a guy <laughs> yeah. who speaks. How, how she long, thought you were deaf mute. How long ago was this? Like a couple weeks ago. But it was like it was like a random interaction. Oh, you told me about this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this was a couple weeks ago, bro. Dog. Yeah. Do Do you know anything about this person? No. She probably thinks 
You're gay. You hate her guts. Oh, that too. I know, dude. She probably or thinks gay. that you like men. <laughs> Shit. And I that's know. not an insult. That's so, just facts. So did you feel nervous while you were talking to her? While there was like a long pause? Or was uh, it like... No, and I think, you know, when I'm around people... So like, say if we went... If us three went out and there was like a girl there yeah. or something like that, I can talk all day because I'm maybe more comfortable. We need, maybe we need to like help him and like break no, he's a grown ass fucking yeah, yeah. no dude we do <laughs> no, this together listen, bro <laughs> but so like if we're all there i'm more comfortable but if it came to us i get that i, I know but that. if we're all comfortable and then if that happens and it's easier for me because this has happened with some of the girls that i've ended up with where they were friends of the, a group right they're all groups so it was easier like if we went and started hanging out by ourselves it was a lot easier those scenarios don't happen a lot anymore though. i know and they're probably yeah. yeah and it's not the best scenarios that exactly happen sometimes. um but that's that would make me more comfortable, but like I don't know. I really I could not tell you. How, it's been my whole life since I can remember. So when, when that when the when it was the eight fucking minutes that oh, happened shit. in between that silence, what were you thinking? Like how what how did you feel? I was like, I was like, I say a mixture of nervous and like confused because in my head, like all these thoughts are going through my head. Am I supposed to ask her for a number? No, she doesn't want that. Maybe she does. Oh, I'm fucking nervous. Holy fuck, we're staring at each other. What am I supposed to do? Do I talk first? And then she was like, oh, okay, I'll see you later. That's what went on in my head. And that's what another scenario where like my face and my skin, you know, like when you get like embarrassed, you get like yeah. hot or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit happened to me right when she left. I was like, fuck. I, I think for you, you just need to have like a couple of go-tos in those situations. Like an easy one for you Especially in a gym context, you should always just be like, hey, we should live together sometime. Yeah. That has worked once. How many times have you used that, though? Once. <laughs> <laughs> one for one, baby. Shit. But, like, I, I, I guarantee you in that. But you just have to kind of, like, it's it's like fighting, right? It's like you have pre-programmed combinations that you know are your hitters. Like, yeah. you know you'll land this every time you throw it. I feel like you need that. When you're, you know, talking know. with somebody, just always be like, yo, like we should, we should go. I can't believe she was staring at you and you didn't say anything. And then she just goes, okay, I guess I'm going to leave now. I'm like, this was not my best moment. Yeah. <laughs> All like, you had to do was like, hey, you want to go get something to eat after this? Or it's like, hey I man, know. what you doing after this? I've never, like, like that, those, those statements, right? And it's when people say like, oh, you got to say this, you got to say this. Even our homie Pat, everybody knows yeah. Patrick, like. He says the same stuff, and I'm just like, I understand. I just, for some reason, like, I can't. Not nah, because you're 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 already you're thinking it. You're I'm already thinking. You're already committed to a negative result. When of course, has that's happened. exactly it. I'm yeah. always thinking the worst that's gonna happen from it, and it's that's fucked. And it's weird because that's kind of helped me in my life in other situations, not girls, right? I always think about the negatives. And, and it's makes kind of you train harder, but whatever, it's also right? it's also got me out of situations where could have got in trouble or something like that. Yeah. But then I've done that my whole life to where it, that's also how I deal with yeah. women, and it's not that's not the best way to yeah. think of everything. But yeah, I mean, it's and like meeting women in, in small social circles now, where like your friends are there, that that starts to become few and far between as you get older. Uh, yeah. You yeah. know, it, it's not as easy. Like in college, like it would just be like you and then you'd be kicking with some boys and the girls would come through. Yeah. And sometimes they bring another home girl and then you would talk to a girl and that would be it. Mm. But what I learned too was specifically after I left, um, uh, I went to a UCR. Mm. Like, well, I already had a girlfriend at the time, so I didn't really get to hit on anybody because, you know, your boy faithful and shit. <laughs> so I I'm decided, super faithful if, yeah. if you can tell because I don't have. Of course, fucking... you wouldn't be able to talk to anybody. You would, fucking, you would explode know, on the dude. spot. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to cheat right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would just start sweating through your clothes like I really like you so much so really there's no, yeah no way you're gonna cheat but what I found out was that especially when I went to community college there isn't a lot of like <laughs> there's not a lot of programs there's not like I'm not in a dorm so I yeah. can't really have those situations so yeah. I just had to shoot my shot to anybody like I like I was uh, my first year at CRC I said I, I want to try to date a girl that's not fucking Asian this time so uh, prior to that, I only had one girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I only liked one girl in high school, and we ended up being together. Then she tore my heart to a million pieces. Shout outs to you. Love you very much. What's her name? Uh, can't say her name because Sacramento's a small town. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but she's, she's, a, look, look, yeah. she's a very very sweet girl we just didn't really mesh well yeah. and it, it was like high school right yeah plus she's yeah. a fucking cunt no I'm kidding yeah. no no no, no. Hey, she's, she's shit, great trust me some of my exes are, yeah. we'll uh, get, we won't get it I want to hear these yeah, stories fuck. but 
I started, you know, when I when I attended community college, I was like, okay, if I want to date somebody else outside of my ethnicity, I just got to shoot my shot, see what happens. Yeah. The first time I ever dated a white girl was my first class was in uh, the first set of class. I don't remember which class it was, <coughs> but it was a Polish girl, and I mm. dated her for a quick second. Joanna Did, and Jacek. Didn't, didn't really work out, <laughs> but I, sh I asked her out, and yeah. it happened. We had class. We had small talk. And it worked out. And then after that, I was like, oh, this shit's not that crazy. Like, you just got to start asking people out and like, see what's yeah. up. Like uh, Patrick, like watching Patrick Riley. He's been on this podcast before. Watching that guy talk with girls is like, wow. Like, he, it, it, it's 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 cool to see someone, like, really good at something. Like, someone like Mario Batali. Watching him cook, you're like, wow, this is... This guy when is, you see guys who are really smooth, it's like, damn, I wish I could do that, man. That's I, I, I don't have everybody. That. It's like, but but that guy could do that that's with, not, with not everybody. Just women. <laughs> you not, look not at Jason with, Chen and you're yeah. like, damn, I wish I could do what Jason Chen does. <laughs> yeah, Said do, nobody. Man, if I had them vocal cords, <laughs> shout I'd be out to like, Jason. I love Boba. <laughs> I be bitches every day. But that watching him, and what it is, it's it's just him just talking. talking. Yeah, it's it's literally just like knowing how to be a good conversation. And you know how to ha carry a, a conversation. I you can, to, yeah. You know how to do it. So just do that. This podcast is brought to you by Skillshare. What is Skillshare? You ask. It is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so you can learn things that you want at your pace based on your busy routine. I know a bunch of people out there want to make films for fun or as a side hustle. There's a lot of classes to take that Skillshare offers that I know a lot of you would enjoy. There's this course called Video on a Budget and even a course for iPhone filmmaking because everybody has a phone and if you have a phone you can make film do not worry about it go out there and enjoy these courses I love them explore your creativity and get two free months of premium membership at skillshare.com slash brain that's two whole months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free get started and join today by heading to skillshare.com slash brain that's two free months of unlimited access to thousands of classes at skillshare.com slash brain when I was in high school, this, I, that was the thing. It's like my my natural instinct was to go with the one girl that was like kind of enforcing it, right? That yeah. started it. Because I remember there was a couple girls in high school. There's at the time I was talking to my ex and these two other girls. <clears throat> the other two girls were very attractive and I liked them. And there was one girl that I really liked, but I didn't know if I, I didn't know if she was liking me or not. And like she would... <laughs> she would like purposely like like walk out of her class and stuff to meet up and talk with me but in my head i just didn't yeah. process that as like she's into me right because there's a window out of this building that's really loose <laughs> i want you to lean on it we're just on lean the, on it see what happens <laughs> and, uh and there was times too where like because like one little thing would happen and i was like like i would text them and i'm not like a person that would text 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 but i would text them they wouldn't respond i'm like okay yeah i'm just they're not good that's like little shit like that would be like oh i'm being annoying like i need to back up what real happened quick to you yeah, i don't know what but happened but see this that shit hurt me because it, at the time when i had my girl it was fun right like i don't want to like bash on her or anything like that yeah, bash but on her. I, I also do want to say <laughs> go check out this full spotify he raps by the way I know, dude. And, and this will talk about he's shy and in love uh, yeah for <laughs> real dude i'm gonna uh, bash your skull oh, in your face and the girl comes uh, by but uh, i'm really shy <laughs> <laughs> but, really shy. but I um, get no bitches. But, but I don't um, want to. So that time that that happened, I was talking to that and this other girl, and the other two girls. My ex was attractive too, but the other girl, there was one girl out of all of them, right? The girl that we used to meet up with class and stuff. And so I ended, I ended up start dating uh, my ex, and this shit like broke my heart. And this happened right in the beginning of it. Those other two girls literally went up to my friend. One of them went up to my friend Thomas, my best friend Thomas, and said. Hey, you know, I really thought Alex was into me. We were really talking a lot. He's like, I thought it's a little weird that all of a sudden he started dating this girl. And he tells me, I'm like, wait, what? For real? He's like, yeah. I was like, fuck. But the one that I was super attracted to, that one didn't go that way. She went to him, you know, your friend's a fucking asshole. Tell him to never fucking talk to me again. How's he going to sit here and flirt with me and talk to me all the time and then go start dating someone else? And I was like, hey, no, nah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, hey, bro, no. That's, hey, I yo, didn't know. I didn't know. I was so like, fuck, That's dude. proof that Alex is pure at heart, dude. That's like, what your problem is. You dude, got, you your, got, your heart is just this beautiful red and green You need mango. to try some wrong in your life, baby. 
I, I know, <laughs> oh, man. Dude. You need to do a little sinning, huh? <laughs> yeah, you need to be a little But center, that's probably yeah. why you've had girlfriends because they like that genuine side of you. So when you don't yeah. overthink situations, things just come easier, right? You, Case in point, man, there's these guys. They're called Fang Bros, right? <laughs> these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, I've heard so many stories about these lovely, lovely two men. They're, but they're my heroes, by the way. Mm -hmm. I look up to these guys, right? I, I feel like this is disingenuous, but we'll continue. No, it's not. No, dude. it's not. No, it's dude. not, man. They're the best. So, like, you know, <laughs> like, I, like I, I, they're, they're they're the they're icons icons would you have, say they're the epitome of asian youtube have, i don't even know if they're asian dude to be honest with you <laughs> oh, okay, i will you. say let, let me just say like how important they are to the community uh-huh continue when kobe died didn't really mean much if they died wow that's what i'm saying Fuck. that's how important they are yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. how that's how that's how dope they are but anyways like even for those for these guys like i hear stories about them all the time mm -hmm. Through everybody tells me stories about them. God knows why, but they even those dweebs have women that touch them. Yeah, yeah. dude. Right? I mean, they, they they I mean they go up to women and they go. Have you I seen get up, my have you swing into the air? They go up to women. And they go. Do you know who these guys are on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> they have two million followers. You should watch their videos. I'm this guy, and somehow it works. Yeah, so you have they, to build a following. They shoot That's, their shot. <laughs> I mean, they shoot their shot, and yeah. it works about one out of like a hundred times. But there's one girl with low self esteem that always touches them. Yeah, <laughs> it works. Yeah, it's weird, and fuck, I don't know. It's heroes, heroes. They're a fucking hero. just key to the city. Just be yeah. fucking an icon, bro. I don't know, dude. It's so weird, and I've dealt with this my whole life, and I wish I didn't. Like, it bums me out that. So you know what you have to do right now? You just have to tell yourself no more of this shit. No more. You know how long I've been telling myself that? No, no, but this this is it. This is it, dude. This so, is it. Hey, I have these random spurts of confidence, right? Like, I'll be in my bed at night. I'm like, you know, Alex, what the fuck? Like, I talk to myself all day. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing, dog? Let's do this shit. And then your neighbor through the curtains like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then Just I'll be like. banger already. Get, Who gives a shit? I'll get fucking confidence in myself to do something. And then I like. Like I said, 90% of the time, won't do it. But sometimes I do do it. I mean, like, like the funny fuck. thing is, is like, I'm not even telling you that you got to be like Patrick. You don't got to be Mr. Yeah, Swap. Be you. You just have to just do something, anything. You could even yeah. be like, when in that moment when she looked at you, you could have just been like, hi. <laughs> Said anything. Yeah. Honestly, you don't, you don't just, not just you. tell everybody, no matter who the context is, just always say, hey, come work out with me. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. Really what it comes down to it at the end of the day is like, have a plan. I baby. don't want to be weird or creepy or have the girls feel uncomfortable. And I just feel like no but matter what, what would you do, I don't even think I don't know. Also I just feel like no matter what I do, if they're not, if they're not interested in me and I'm trying to it, I become creepy and weird. But so that's just, not, that's not akin to you it. though, because yeah, yeah, it's not you dude. Like it's like, for example, we like, all know creepy dudes. This, this goes, this goes for anything. Depending on if the person finds you attractive or not is the only factor that differentiates somebody from being creepy or not. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. That's I've true, seen, dude. That's actually very true. I've seen my ho personal fucking homegirls go on rants talking about these creepy fucking guys, right? But they tell the story about the guy that they're dating and they're doing the same thing the creepy guys are doing. Yeah. The only difference is, is that guy was good looking. Yeah. That's it. You know, you know the things I used to say to Tiffany, my fiance, and I've been with her for 10 years. Shout the, out thi the things I've, I used to say to her when we were dating were all very unforgivable things. Like what? I used to say very perverted things to her. <laughs> like what? And she was like into it. I want, to, she, I want to and, hear what. And, and if, and if you, <laughs> I'm an example. But uh, but if you know who Tiffany is, <laughs> she's a very sweet. And I did, I was surprised. I didn't. Think she just was, walked up. Let me spit in your pussy hole. I know, kind of, very close. Shit. And it worked somehow. But it, it, but we were like we were like juniors in high school, right? And yeah. it would start with things like yo, like I would say, I, even saying this like <laughs> makes me feel. Say weird. it now. <laughs> I'd be like yo, like what kind of like what color is your thong right now? And I would like I would be a I'd be a fucking asshole. Like I would be a pervert. And like, and it worked because she liked you. And yeah. I'd be like, yo, like, I wonder, like, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna. I would say it. Dude, say, I'm it. Say, it. Ass say it. Yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn that ass up in the center quad in front of like I would say <laughs> shit like that. But see, and, and saying that out loud makes me sweat the also, way Alex would in front of a girl because because right this now is I've disgusting. lost all respect for Nick. Just yeah. 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 He is this no is high school Nick, bro. I was never a friend. But but like this is current Nick. That would only work 
if we were and we we had a relationship already like we were talking yeah. we, but, but it was yeah like, and, and that's just a i mean just to prep don't it, don't know. say that whoever's listening no, say exactly what <laughs> so don't do. don't no, say yeah, that but to other girls that only prefaces like what what happens when you have a certain vibe and a feel with somebody right yeah, yeah. so for example when mariel and i i, I told the story how mariel and i started dating she and i were already flirting for for you know back and forth a lot and then when we went on this thing which i thought was a date but it wasn't a date she gives me this really awkward hug and i was mm-hmm. like hey cool by the way i'm not your friend we're dating so we're not friends yeah and Boom. i said it straight if i said that to some random girl she would call the cops on me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I would sound like a rapist yeah. you know and the way he said it was like this hey we're dating. Yeah, we're not friends. <laughs> He's like, I was holding her by the neck. But I, wasn't, wasn't, like, I, just, I wasn't squeezing. I just squeezed. We're not friends. <laughs> I'm going to love you. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there's context to that yeah. stuff, right? I mean, obviously, if if there's a girl that's flirting, you guys are talking back and forth consistently, and then you just up and bounce, and you start dating some other girl, I'd probably be mad too if I was a girl. I'd be like, Yo, what yeah. the fuck? I was jacking off to your fucking face all night. I know. Yeah, and, and that's all, what both I think. Those it, girls were jacking I off think it comes face. down to it, to where I always growing up, I never felt like i was attractive i was always a little chunkier and stuff like that so it just it got worse it got what that feels like it got worse and worse as i got older because it like wasn't changing you know Mm -hmm. like nothing was changing so it got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse (laughs) but you didn't get a confidence boost when you had girlfriends though yeah like you know and it's weird it's it's even to this day you know even all my close friends are like when we have this conversation, because all my friends know me and they all know I've always been like this. They always say, look at this guy's lineup. Have you ever seen his girls? And yeah, a lot of my girlfriends are very attractive and I know this and stuff, but I still, I don't know why. That does not give me any, like it, once that relationship ends or something like that, I was like, see, see, you get what I'm saying? Oh, you're so like waiting you, for it. But see, that's what yeah. I'm saying. That's like, you You have a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're just waiting for something bad to happen when it happens. Yeah. And it I need all, to get, and I know that. And that's like the worst thing about me. And I know when I have these conversations with myself, like I'm at home and stuff, that's what I tell myself. I'm like, I got to stop being so negative about everything. And then like shit with my last relationship, right? Like I would say everything with every relationship, I probably grow better. Like, you know, when I was yeah. first in my first relationship, I was very jealous because I always felt like, oh, I'm not good enough. What she can go get yeah. this better looking guy. Why? So was I, yeah. yeah I felt so, like that too. And, and you know, that was with every relationship, but it got better and better over time, you know, cause I'm like, all right, you know, I'm tripping out a little bit, whatever, that, that type of stuff. Um, and then, so like, even with this last one, I was trying my hardest not to be like that, but with all this shit that went on with this last one, it like, it fucked it up mm-hmm. like a lot because I'm like, well, your lax ex-girlfriend though is kind of hard to say, cause you can't base it I off know. of her. She was a fucking psychopath though. Yeah. That yeah the was, stories that you have crazy. from that was insane. Yeah. That one was crazy. And that was a uh, very, that was, I would say is my first like very toxic relationship that was actually like fucked with me because during the time that I was with her, she made me feel like I was, I was actually like the fucked up one. Well, she manipulated you. And then afterwards when she wanted to get back together with me, it was her apologizing saying, oh, you were right for all this. You were right. You were right to feel this way, all this stuff. But I'm like, you it already fucked me up so much, right? Because I invested all this time and all this energy into all this shit. But, but also too, like I feel like just because I know the, the the story a bit, yeah. Just from <laughs> just from a background perspective, you also just you were a little bit of a pushover. Oh yeah. Just because like, 100%. I mean, just to preface this, right? She lived with her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. And then you were like, that's normal. <laughs> like, that's, like, yeah, whatever. No, so this was the thing. When that happened, I wasn't okay with it, but the person, she got mad at me and I was never okay with it, but I was such a pushover in that relationship that I just let it happen. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't. You were in an abusive relationship is what you really were. Yeah. Up. And it was like, you know, and I remember during the time, I remember because going into that, the whole thing, the whole shit was, the whole thing was shit. But I remember going into it. I'm like, all right, like now I'm older. I can't be always like negative i can't be like oh this person wants to leave me all that type of shit but that relationship did not help that shit at all because during it it was like yo i don't know what the fuck is going on right now but i was so stuck into it for some reason because i really at the time i thought i loved the girl right so it was like hard for me to get away from it and then when she would do shit like that like when she moved in with her ex-boyfriend again it was i had an issue with it but 
I don't know. She had a way to make she, me still stay. She I made don't know. you think that like, oh, you're being foolish. I was overreacting. And like I, some of the times, like I would just like, okay, cool. In my head, I would be like, no, I know I'm not tripping, but you know, I had strong feelings for the girl. So I'm like, I'm just going to stay. What did you like about her originally? I think bec it was like we were into similar stuff that I thought, right? As we got deeper into the relationship, I figured out that, okay, a lot of the stuff were not into the, a lot of the same things, right? Um, but I don't know. Obviously, she was attractive. I thought she was attractive. I found her attractive. Uh, I thought she was super nice. Um, she was fun. Like, we, we like to do a lot of the same stuff. So it was fun. Like, when we were hanging out and she was a friend of our group. So... We all had fun together. I used to be myself like this, like with us talking shit and stuff. That's how I was around her. And it was normal. That's how it was. So when like that shit started happening, it started going to different levels. Like it was a lot easier for me to get into it. Um, but I think that was it. I think I, I don't know if I was super into her. I think I just got so comfortable being around her. And, and being you approached with her. her or she approached you? Um, it was her in the beginning. You know, obviously she was attractive and, you know, I, as a guy, you know, you always think about like, oh, she's a hot girl. Like, you know, yeah. fuck, right? That's like the normal thing that goes in your head. I never in fucking my lifetime thought that it would actually turn into what it turned into. Um, but no, she had started it originally because coming back to me having zero idea, it would be her messaging me all day, every day, all day, every day, all day, every day. And during that time that was happening, even in my head, I'm like, oh, she's, she's just a nice person. That's why she's talking to me all the time. And one of my one of my best friends, Alfonso, used to tell me, like, dog, she's into you. Like, she wants you. I'm like, no, she has a boyfriend. Like, she's just super nice. She just, she just talks to me a lot. And it was always that over and over again. He would be telling me, like, dude, no, no one talks to a person this much, especially of the other sex, like, this much. Where you guys are staying up to, like, fucking one o'clock in the morning and she's messaging you. And in my head, I still think. <laughs> he had no idea. No, she's just nice, yeah. right? And it had to come to a point where she kind of made the first move on me. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So this is something. This isn't like we're just homies, right, anymore. Um, so, yeah, she she started it. Uh, she started it. What basically. was her exact words? No, she just, she, like, when she dropped me She's off like, come at over and eat my ass. No, we went and hung out once. <laughs> we went and hung out once. That's what it takes for this dude to pull the trigger. I know. <laughs> and then he's like, I don't think she likes me still. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I ate her ass for, like, three hours. I still don't think she's into me. <laughs> no. Um, what's it called? So, like, I went, we went and hung out, whatever. And when she had drove me, and when she dropped me off at home, when I went in for a hug, she, like, went in to give me a kiss. And then I asked her, I'm like, oh, were you just, did you just try to kiss me? Because <laughs> Alex, no, but, I'm going to fuck. No, but here, let me, let me defend myself real quick. Let me okay, defend no, myself real quick. Hold on a second, bro. I don't give a fuck. You received the kiss and then you went, are you trying to no, kiss no, no. me? What the fuck? I'm no, gonna, no, I'm she gonna didn't fucking, kiss. Okay. She didn't kiss me. But she was like, when I went in for the hug, <laughs> she was coming in like as she was going to kiss me. So I stopped. I'm like, oh, are you, you trying to kiss me? And she just stopped and looked at me. And in my head, she's with somebody still, you know? Oh, she had a boyfriend at the yes. time. Yes. So that's why I was kind of like, oh, you, you try to kiss me? And then it was like, she asked me, oh, do you want to kiss me? And I'm like, I mean, if you want to, I mean, yeah, if you want to kiss, that's fine. Right? I, I feel like most people would have just like not even thought about how she has a boyfriend and just boom, like, all right, look at You're fucking yeah. funny, man. But and that, then, that's, so, you, you, so, you, that spoke, shows how pure this fool is, though. I know, but he still spoke about it like it was a business transaction. <laughs> Are you trying to kiss me? She goes, do you want to kiss me? Yeah, yeah dude, I, this, I guess. This I'm guy, like, that's going to be a um, hundred bucks, but. Yeah. I mean, this guy's the king of consent, dude. Like, this I like guy, that. You're, you're a consent man. But dude. I, I was, right? And not, not, no, 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 no. That was the right way to say that. That wasn't the right way to say that. I am, and I tried to be. I tried I tried to be, right? So when that happened, like, I remember going home and when I, right when I go home, I'm like, oh, that relationship fucked, right? That, that girl's, that goes, there goes that friendship or whatever, right? Because that was fucking awkward as fuck, right? Like, so I got home next day. It was fun. Like we went and hung out. Wait, so you guys didn't kiss? No, we didn't kiss. Alex, what? No, so we didn't kiss. You, you oh, are, you, oh, because hey, she has a boyfriend. That's right. I'm yeah. a man of principle. This so guy. we did. I like that. I wouldn't have, I would not have kissed either. Yeah. And then I so. I think most dudes would have. So the next day. Trash. Um, kind of trash. Almost kind of, <laughs> almost kind of like how you guys told me just right now. Like you need to sin a little bit more, right, or whatever, like that. That wasn't That's my. What he said, I said I'd like <clears> your <throat> thoughts. I know, I'm yeah. just, I'll, but that wasn't that wasn't my I cool thought. By but it. she asked down. me to hang out the next day, so we do, and it was around like Christmas time or whatever, like that. 
And so we hang out, whatever, and we go to a restaurant. There's like a gift being made. We go to a restaurant um, and we sit down and I sit across from her, right? And at this point she says, why don't you come and sit next to me? So already in my head, I'm like, Ooh. okay, so she wants, obviously this is not a friendship dinner anymore, right? This is going to something else. So we go and then like, it turns as I put my arm around her and then she wants to kiss. So then we kiss, right? Um, so like, I remember going after that, like I felt guilty because I'm like, yo, this girl has a girl or not, <laughs> this girl has a guy. And I was like, you know, I don't, I don't like to do shit like this because I think about like, um, how you would feel if you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If someone was cheating on me yeah. and which I'm sure she fucking did. Um, but you know, it's like, I, that's how I think. And, but at the time, like she was very attractive and I was kind of just like, oh shit, this is happening. This is cool. Right. I yeah. would have never expected and this. And she was, she was pressing it. So, yeah. And so, you know, it, it went, whatever we went down like that. And then, so like the whole thing leading up to it was, I was kind of being, don't get me wrong, this whole relationship, I was dumb for staying. And I know that now, obviously during the time, my some of my closest friends who cared about me trying to get me out of the relationship, but I was so stuck in it. It was dumb for me to be in there. But the the beginning of it was that I was, I was kind of being, she was kind of leading me on in the sense that she kept telling me she was going to break up with her guy. And because of how I am, I disbelieved her. So I would stay around. And it was to the point where I'm like waiting, waiting and waiting and waiting. And like, it's just like all this shit. And it was about like two months of it. And then I remember finally like, valentine day came around and i was kind of excited I'm like oh look i'm gonna have a fucking valentine's this year so i'm i think we yeah we think we went out to dinner whatever like that and then that same day like uh they broke up right and i'm just like oh fuck and then so i was like cool like finally they broke up now we can have our thing right because we've already been planning this for two fucking months anyways mm -hmm. and she said that she wanted to be with me and when they broke up we can be together but then it switched to when they broke up oh i don't i can't do this can't be in a relationship i can't do this i didn't realize how much this was gonna affect me uh i can't be in a relationship with you and i was just like Oh, fuck. So that hit yeah. me hard because I'm like, for two months, I stood around because I'm buying into this thing that like, when this is done, I'm going to be able to be with you. Right. And we're going to be able to be a thing. So already throughout this time, right. I had to DM her. I wasn't allowed to text her because she didn't want her guy seeing her texting me and all that type of shit. Right. Um, so then after that, they broke up. It was like a, basically like a two month period where we didn't talk. And I was so like heartbroken by it because i had invested all my time into it thinking that like oh when they break up we're gonna be together mm -hmm. so when that happened i was fucked up about it right i didn't want to talk to anybody anyways my friends were trying to get me to talk to other people i just wasn't into it and there was a couple of times where i could have went out on dates and i purposely made up reasons to cancel them because i didn't want to go because I didn't want to go. Because car broke down and you would have picked him up. I know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, my car broke down. They offered to pick me up. I'm like, nah. Nah, and, uh, I'll meet you there. <laughs> so like later on, later on, this shit ends up happening, right? Where we're dating. A lot of shit happens and stuff. And I'll talk a lot about it. But I don't want to say certain things, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we end up start dating again. And it comes to a point where there's a i mean already just off the bat it, it was such a volatile thing yeah. like there's nothing ever that's going to come good of that oh no like just just from the personality set and how she started the the, the quote-unquote relationship yeah. there was nothing great about that yeah and i know this and i remember she even told me this too she was like i don't want you thinking you know i know i cheated on my guy but that's not who i am and me being dumb believe it I yeah. believed it, right? But I should know, like, no, that's not, that's who she is. If she's willing to do that for a person that she's been in a relationship with, whatever, how long they were, she's probably going to do that to me, right? Because yeah. I'm just some guy yeah, that she, she just met, together. right? Fuck that. <laughs> and so, um, so it comes to a point where she has a she has to move, right? Um, so she moves in with her ex boyfriend again, and well, you, you guys were dating at this time, yeah. yeah. So it was weird. I. I we, I would say we are officially start. Yes, we were official. I believe before she moved out, um, and she moved back into her ex boyfriend. So everyone house. in your circle, her we, circle, knew that you no. were together. So that was the thing, oh, because shit. she wanted to be respectful to her ex and it didn't want it to show like she just jumped right into a relationship. We had to purposely keep this a secret, right? And that was, I would say, that's what fucked me up the most because I was the hardest because, um, like people, like I would be around people. 
and people would see her and she's attractive. And I have people coming up to me saying, damn, you see her, man, I'd fuck the shit out of her. Man, would you fuck the shit out of her? I'm hearing all different ways that people would fuck my girlfriend and all that <laughs> stuff like this, right? But I can't say anything because I'm not allowed, I'm not supposed to be telling people this shit, right? So like every day I had to deal with this shit when we were at, uh, at, the, at the gym and it's just like, it used to fucking eat me alive. And then she would ask me, why are you mad? Or like it would come up like it, obviously my attitude would change. Right. I'm not going to be all fucking happy. Right. When I hear this shit and she would ask me like, oh, why are you bothered? And I would tell her, she's like, why does that bother you? Why does that even bother you? I'm like, she's like, I'm with you. So why does that bother you? Not I'm like, really. I'm like, because yeah. I, I'm like, I still have to <laughs> hear like, why, why does that bother you? I'm with you and another guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, and we can't tell anybody yeah. about it. Yeah. So yeah. what's the problem? <laughs> so it used to, it used to like eat me alive because I'm like, fuck, like, Obviously, I still can't believe you stuck around that long. I know. Like, I'm trust me, I am the st I'm st very stupid for but, staying around. But it's around. also like where your headspace was at the time. Yeah, right. And you, you did <laughs> talk about how you felt like you were like insecure well, about a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just even beyond that too, because you have such low self esteem. Every time you're with somebody, you still can't believe that you're with this person. Hey, yeah, that's what it was. So, it was a hundred percent that and because I knew of this person for a while, and I always thought she, I was always attracted to her. Right? I never thought in my whole entire life that this situation would be happening. And, to and me. that stuff becomes problematic because, like, what happens is you also put this person on a pedestal. So every, every time they do something wrong, you think like, well. Well, when am I going to find this another person like this yeah. again? Yeah. And then you excuse negative behaviors constantly because you feel like you were undeserving of their affection. Yeah. So then that's problematic. So no matter what you do from a from a from a relationship on here, you have to feel like you're on equal grounds. That's how it is with friendships too. If you ever yeah. notice that, yeah. if it's not even just the regular friendships, mm -hmm. if you have a friend, right? And you feel like that friend is beneath you. No matter what they say, let's say like um, like I think Nick is fucking beneath me, right? Which is Ooh, facts, but it's true. And so yeah. great fact, and this is how he feels, right? <laughs> and and so, I'm cool with it. <laughs> so we're ha we're having a regular conversation. I say I, I think you and I are equals, right? Mm -hmm. We're all having a group conversation, and this is in a friendship scenario. We're talking about, let's say, I don't know what to do with a pile of money and how we should invest it, right? You 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 say something. Right. Let's say you don't even know about money, but because yeah. I respect you and I think you're equals, I'll sit here and listen to what you have to say. You'll be like, yeah, I think what you do is you take that money and put it into this, this, and that, and those gain interest and you'll get money. I'm like, cool. Nick comes up and Nick will go buy crypto. And Nick goes, you know what? I think you should invest my, but you shut the fuck up. <laughs> right. And you could say the same yeah. thing you're saying. David, because, this happened yesterday. Yeah. And by the way, this actually <laughs> happened at lunch yesterday. And so, <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> no, but that, that's, that's the thing about yeah. seeing people as equals, right? Yeah. Is like it, it causes a better relationship. A lot of the times people jump into bed with certain people, even mm. in relationships and friendships, and they're mm. not equals and they don't even yeah. know it. Yeah. And it causes this weird dynamic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And in your case, that's what it is. Yeah. And that was the thing. And then too, so like it was it was things like that that would bother me. And it would and then like all of a sudden, you know, I was jealous. Now I was the jealous person. And so like I would go home and be like, fuck, I'm being jealous. And I told yeah. myself I didn't want to be this way, but I knew I was being jealous, right? I knew I was being jealous because, because of all the shit that was happening. Obviously I was jealous of it, right? Because all these people are saying shit, I can't say anything, right? And I, it just got, it got to that point to where like, so she moved back in with her ex. Mm -hmm. I wasn't happy about it, and but that turned into a fight. And I remember thinking to myself, like after that fight, I, I was like, I feel like I should be able to be mad about this. Yeah. Um, but she's telling me I'm not. So like I started telling myself, like, maybe I'm not allowed to be mad about this. Maybe yeah. I am being jealous again and being overreacting. Yeah. So because that's what it was. I was jealous. I was it too sounds, jealous dude, for her. It sounds like that's what she always goes to. Yeah, right? I was too jealous for her. And it start I started believing that. I was like, fuck, I am. So what jealous. was the last straw for you then? Like what what made you? So guys this up? is what happened. So um a lot of the stuff that she did was with her ex now, right? Because she lived there. And it was little things like posting food of plates, right? There's two plates. So she's cooking food. I know who the other plate's for, right? And I'm over here eating by myself. I'm going to restaurants eating by myself. And then I go on dude, Instagram. So crazy. And I, that and, is the saddest and funniest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Of and dude. then I see that she's cooking <laughs> dinner or they're at restaurants. And I know who the other person there is with her, right? So it used to like, it used to bother me a lot. Cause I'm used to be like, fuck man. And I remember I bring it up to her once. She's like, why does that bother you? I'm like, because you're my girlfriend and I I'm eating alone, but you're eating with your ex. He gets to eat with you. I don't. And she's like, what? I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and so what would she say when you would tell her that? 
But she's like, I'm you with know, you. This she was, say that I shit. don't even remember. Yes, basically that. No, so, basically that, like, oh, but I'm your girlfriend. But at the time, did he know that you guys were dating? No. Still not, no. obviously, right? Well, that was the thing. So even during this time, I still Dude, couldn't people, text her. Yo, people I had are to, nuts. I had dog. to DM her only because that was the thing. Because as she moved back in there, she wasn't paying rent. He was letting her live there for Alex, free. you're the side chick. I know. And I know that nowadays, right? <laughs> but yeah, so I couldn't text her because she didn't want him to see her texting me all the time and then possibly kick her out and she had nowhere to go. Bro, people are so mean, um, dude. But, wh but why are you <laughs> oh why are you God. concerned for her well-being? You know, I don't know. And I would have these little moments where I'd be like, I don't give a fuck. He's not, is he in charge of you? I remember I used to ask that. Is he in charge of you? D does he run your shit? Whatever like that. And it used to lead into fights. But basically what happened, so she broke up with me. And the reasoning why was because she was going out to dinner with one of her friends and I remember this day because I was at work and I texted her. I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. And I asked her because that girl also has a guy and he was going. So I asked her, I'm like, oh, is your ex going with you? And she completely blew it off. She just went, she kept going on with it because every time she would go out now when we're not together, I was like, oh, is your ex going with you? And how often were you at this time? How often were you hanging out with her? Just you and her? We would try. So when I started what working. What was the ratio with where she would hang out with I would with see dude? her two maybe three times a week for about two of those times for about five hours and one of the times for about like towards the middle of the day and she would spend the night whatever that and then go back to her fucking exercise it sounds like, so weird saying that just, yeah, so um, everybody who's listening to the story is just like what the fuck yeah. is wrong with alex yeah. and then so um yeah basically that what it was so i used to, every time she used to go do shit right my first reaction is oh are you going with your ex because secretly in my mind, I thought, oh, they're, they're fucking, they're together, right? I'm being played. Secretly in my mind, but I didn't want to believe that because I did believe that she had, like, she really was, like, with me, right? I don't know why, yeah. but I did. And um, so finally it came to that, and I asked her again. I, I had asked her, like, three times. I'm like, are you, is your ex going with you? Like, you're, like, completely Dodging avoiding question, this conversation, yeah. uh, this question. <clears throat> And that's what led into her breaking up with me, saying that she couldn't handle this anymore. I'm way too jealous. Yo, way too jealous of people. Of you're too jealous. Nuts. That's her so ex. funny. People and are so, so crazy, dog. Yeah, and then so she broke up with me. Obviously, it fucked me up, right? Because we're already together for a decent amount of time. It what we weren't together for a long time, but the whole situation went on for a long time. Us being official wasn't that long. It was maybe about four five months so she flipped it out on you and after she flipped it on you you felt bad i i yeah so when she broke up with me i was torn up by it right i mean Damn, at, at the end crazy. at the end of the day man like before you even try to get another relationship you need you need like your own personal self-esteem boost oh i know because like <laughs> it's this right here is like a vicious cycle every time yeah. that you get with somebody and you feel like you don't deserve them no matter what they do they're going to be able to run you over oh, of constantly yeah. mm -hmm. and that's the hard part it's like yeah you can get with somebody unless by chance you find another saint like yeah. you find a saint that will never ever do that to you most people aren't like that because when people could sense weakness, even if That's it's somebody crazy. that you love, they, they take advantage of it, yeah. right? And I, I built up a little bit of strength, I, I'd say, out of all this because I'd say for like three, four months, I was torn up by it, right? And Nick kind of knows because I yeah. would- It was around the same time when we started training together. Yeah. And like, he would tell me these stories and I'd be like, what? Yeah, no, like <laughs> we had already been training, but like this was after he had left and we were doing one-on-ones. Yeah, that's So right. I started telling him more about what was going on with my situation. And I was, I was pretty messed up by it. I was really sad. I was depressed, right? Like go home, cry, all that type of shit, right? Like I was yeah. really messed up about it. And then like over time, like- there was moments where I went through a lot of shit at the time. Like number one, I was on fucking test, right? So my test levels were up, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe my emotional state was going to be worse anyways. But then one of my longtime clients and one of my first clients passed away in January. So this all was happening right after another, right? But before that, we had broke up. There was about two months where she didn't, we didn't talk. And I was really devastated by it. Then my client passed away. Right before that, she had kind of barely started talking to me again, like here and there, like sending these little things. And it was weird. I remember feeling weird about it. Like I was kind of excited, but I was like, fuck, I was so worried about if I get back together with this girl, my friends are going to fucking either stop talking to me or they're going to start doing something because they fucking hate this girl. So you knew that like you had the potential of falling back into this I girl. I did. I did. Girl. And there was, I mean, there was an opportunity. Um, and it just felt weird and like shit happened with my client. He passed away. 
all that type of stuff. So, but it came to a point where like shit kept happening to where I started kind of turning into like sad to like, yo, fuck this, right? Fuck this girl. And I got to that point to where around like a March time around when when this happened in a March time, I forget which year, I think it was last year. Um, Basically it was that she wanted to get back together with me. And I was, I was proud of myself in the sense because I literally straight up told her, I don't want to be with you. Um, I don't want to be around you. I don't want to see you. And I don't want to talk to you. I think it's best for us if we don't see each other, talk to each other or anything. Like I don't, I just don't want to do it anymore. And then that's when all the fucking, oh, I'm so sorry. I ruined us. I should have this. You, you had all the, uh, you were, you had all the right to be jealous. You had all this type of stuff. But I remember telling myself, I remember reading it and obviously it was, I was so in my head like, oh fuck, like she feels bad. But I remember telling myself like, no, fuck this shit. I don't want to deal with this shit. That's so crazy where your brain goes. I don't want to deal with this shit no more. And a big thing that helped me out was my friends being so stern on me. Like, yo, this girl is not good for you. She used you and all this type of shit. Right. So eventually I was able to fucking tell her like, look, I don't want to, we're done. Like, I don't want you anymore. All these other times I sat here and waited around for you and I was, you know, sad and stuff. And then you would come back when you wanted me or wanted whatever you wanted from me. And I was there to do it. This time it's not the same no more. Like, I don't want to do it no more. But but you see like the change of like her response when you set that boundary and you were like straight up with her and you were honest with her. People are interesting too, because you didn't have to do all that. I mean, I'm a very spiteful human being. Mm -hmm. So I, if if somebody, (laughs) if somebody hurts me, I I try to make sure that they hurt 10 times more. Yeah. So like for me, like in that situation where she comes being, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. I would have just been like, okay. <laughs> and then you just disappear. Yeah. And, and they e- text you again and then you just leave it alone, leave it alone. And I felt bad about this. And like, we, we had this conversation not that long ago when I finally told you about this whole situation, right? Yeah. It was, uh, I still felt weird to like not tell people. Yeah. Like I was still like looking up like, oh, I don't want to say this. I don't, I shouldn't tell people Why? this. But then, then it kind of clicked in my head like, yo, I shouldn't have to hide this shit no more. Like, I don't give a fuck. Right. You know, I'm not going to go and bl- blast a person's name everywhere and shit, but I shouldn't have to hide this shit no more. And that was the thing. I was hiding it from a lot of people. I was hiding it pe- from people that were really close to me, which is starting to make me feel different ways about the people that were close to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like all of a sudden I'm like not liking people that are close to me but it was because due to all the fucking stress that was happening to me little things were like fucking pissing me off and you know making my attitude yeah, change towards people uh, yeah and, i mean you, you i mean like i said like you know empathy is a great thing to have but yeah. sometimes like you kind of give too much you don't have anything left for yourself yeah, yeah. so like especially like you're, you're having empathy for somebody who doesn't really deserve it yeah. i mean every <laughs> everybody is fucked up for a reason so mm-hmm. that's where my empathy goes as far out to right so when somebody does something wrong to me after after a set of done after I slash their tires, I <laughs> you know and I'm sitting at home and I'm reading my Bible and I, you know and I'm, and I'm praying singing hymns you yeah. know the usual you know Espiritu Santo I'm doing all sorts of stuff yeah. like, you know the beads and everything yeah. I start to realize like then my empathy comes I'm like this person is fucked up and did this fucked up thing to me because something happened to them and I don't mm. know what it is but that's really as far as it goes mm-hmm. right yeah. because. I, I can only try to empathize so I don't have hate in my heart, but that doesn't mean that you get an excuse for your behaviors. Yeah, yeah. It's, I forgive people, not for them. I do it for, for myself. You, so you can let it go. So I can Wash move the hands. fuck on. Yeah. And that's yeah. what people have to get too. Forgiveness for me isn't so I can make that person sleep well at night. I don't say, hey, you're forgiven because I want you to feel good about yourself. I say you're forgiven so I can move the fuck on. Yeah. So I don't have to fucking worry about you. I don't have to sit here with this hate in my heart because that's the part that fucks me up because then you get to take a piece of me that I never allowed yeah. you to have. Yeah. So when you have like this type of like anger, that's where that's where empathy, and that's how I use my empathy mm-hmm. anyways. Because what happens when you start worrying about other people, especially when they don't deserve it, they just take pieces away from you all yeah. the time. Yeah. Every time you see something that reminds you of them, you get fucking angry, fucks up your whole day. So they get to take that from you. Why yeah. do they keep on getting to take, take, and take even after they're out of your life? Yeah. It's just not fucking fair. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what was going on. And even after, like when I told her I didn't want to be with her, I was kill- I was still more on the side of like, you like, look, I, I still care about her. Right, I still care about her well being. I just don't want to see her. I don't want to like. Damn, not. I wouldn't even have that. Yeah, and I felt that way until stuff started coming out Mm -hmm. about 
I started finding about lies that she told me about fucking people when she was telling me she didn't and it was huge fights telling these lies about specific things and I started hearing these things and I'm like yo you know what fuck this girl like no I don't care about you no more obviously I don't wish any harm or ill will on somebody oh, I always do. but, but you're like if she gets coronavirus it's not that <laughs> big of a deal yeah I don't I wouldn't <laughs> care you, you know really and it just I don't ever really hate people that much, but I would say for this person, like I have a little bit of hate in my heart, but also I'm like, you know what? I feel like I'm, I'm a little better now, no matter what, I'm always going to be nervous to talk to girls. I could try to fix that, but that shit, I feel like whenever I'm in my next relationship, we'll see. It might've, it might've fucked me up. I'm nervous about that. Right. I don't think it should, it it should fuck you up because like, once again, in this situation though, she is a fucked up person. In your case, you have to take that personal responsibility of saying that you actually didn't set any boundaries for yourself. You let this person take you over because you you felt, you felt that you didn't deserve them. So you allowed yourself to be punked by this girl. And there was a lot of huge signs for you. It's not like there wasn't, it it was like, literally like, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to still live with my ex-boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have dinners together, and I'm gonna post that picture. You get to see it, aha! Uh-huh. And then I'm gonna deny it. I bet yeah. she was surprised. She was like, "Wow, I can't believe this is going out I know, so well." Oh, there was one too, right? This <laughs> was All this right. was the this was a big one too. I remember this because she was like, "Oh, I'm gonna go out to dinner." And uh, all these people are coming. She told me that, right? Because this was already at the time she was living with her ex. Um, so I think she told me that immediately because she probably knew. I was going to ask her like, oh, is your ex going, right? So she told me there's like all these, she listed off all these people that were going to this dinner, right? It was like some big dinner. And then she even said, and my ex is coming too, because, you know, he's friends with these people too. I'm like, all right, cool. That's cool. So I ended up still following one of the people that were in that group, right? And I I literally was so fine with it. When she told me, I'm like, hey, I was like, there was the one day this is what hurt me the most right because i was like hey look i'm okay with it she straight up told me like straight up and i was like oh cool look it this is cool she told me i don't even have to worry about it right she's going to go do this i know they're all friends and stuff like that i'm scrolling through my instagram at home and then that person that i followed that was in the group posted a picture said date night with my favorite couple him and that girl and her and her ex so I screenshot it, right? I got pissed. Like I was so fucking hot. Dude. And I saw it. My skin was red. I remember standing up in my room like, what the fuck? Like I was so heated. I screenshot it and I sent it to her and I was like, have fun on your date. And then she wrote back, stop being jealous. And you're like, you're right. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're like, you're right. She hit you're me. hundred percent right. You know, she baby, told me all I this shit like, oh, I, I asked them. I told them not to post anything like that. We, they all know that we're not together. I don't know why they would say that. And she's like, I, we're going home. I'm going home. We're supposed to go do all this stuff, but I'm going home. Mm, but I remember. Oh, so she got mad and retaliated. <laughs> yeah, I'm going home. I told them I don't want to go do anything what? else, so I'm going home. Saving and I just, face. I remember feeling that was one of the fucking days. I was like, fuck, see, because I felt good. I was like, yo, look, she told me this. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm, this is not normal for me. Normally, I would still be bothered. I'm not. And then that same fucking night, I was like, what in the fuck? I was so heated with that shit. And I that, mean, you should probably would have stopped talking to her at that point and you yeah, would have been okay. I know. But here's the here's relationship the, only lasted like two more weeks after that. But, but the, bright, the bright side down. to having this relationship is like, chances are you're not going to get in a relationship that's going to be yeah, worse than no, that. Dude, hopefully or not. as bad. Hopefully not. Because now you know. Now you, now you know that like you've been there. Yeah. You've understood the signs of pretty much abuse yeah <laughs> being fully taken i mean she'll, she'll be problematic in her other relationships and everything else that she does i yeah. mean that's just how she is nobody's really going to correct her because she probably doesn't really have any that many close friends and if they she does have quote unquote close friends from her behavior because i don't really know her like that because i met her before mm-hmm. and when i met her everybody knows i told him i didn't have a good feeling about her right off the jump Mm-hmm. Right. And what was it? What was it? Oh, not that I just mind. just having conversations, and I'm like, mm, that's something I don't like about this person. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of you know moved on from it. But you you see me like that with people, like people I don't like. <laughs> like you could tell, oh, it, yeah. it seeps, yeah. it seeps out of my like, skin, <laughs> <laughs> I, and I can't control it. You remind yeah. me of one of my buddies that does the same thing too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just and like he's, he's big in Taiwanese, he has a big old head. <laughs> but tell me, how often are we right though? No, yeah. like ten for ten, bro. Like out of all the times where I'm like, oh, this dude's sketch, you're you're always right. Yeah. And same with uh, the homie. 
Yeah, and it's not, and it doesn't happen to a lot of people. But when it, when the spidey senses tingle, it's probably because I met somebody like this before. It's for yeah. a reason, and yeah. it's and it's reminiscent of that person, mm-hmm. right? It's like something about this person is off, and I feel like I've been fucked over by somebody like this before. Yeah. yeah, and it's and it's usually I don't know what it is. I can't put it into words, but it's because I've been through it and I'm seeing it again. Yeah, and yeah. so I just go, oh, something's off about here. It's like when the fucking antelope is in the fucking shit and they hear it leaves yeah, rustling. Yeah, I know, right? They're They're like, oh, like, shit. Exactly. Yeah. But when I met this person, I was like, ah, oh, they're, they're nice, but something's off. And I kind of just distanced myself after that. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like super nice, right? And, you know, being me, I was like, oh, she's super nice. Like it was cool. And then now I know who she is. And I even like, this is just recent too. And, you know, it's still, I hate that this shit fucked with me for so long because even still to this- But how can it not though, dude? I know, you but know? it's still like- uh by even, having some self-respect, Alex. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But even I, recently, I was like, I was still catching myself like, because I'm not scared to tell the story anymore, right? Like, I'll tell people what fucking happened. Um, and But I would still be like, I would be like this, you know? But really, though, like, I understand I was jealous. I'll give her that. I was jealous. But then even like a couple weeks ago, I'm like, why? You why still, am I saying that shit? You still play with yourself. Yeah, I'm like, why Why am I still saying like, I'm trying to give her some like, oh, I was jealous though. So she did have a reason to do this. But at the end of the day, I'm like, I think I'm saying that because I don't want to be like, because I, I know when you tell a story, everybody said, oh, well, I want to hear their side of the story, right? Yeah. So I say that because I know I was jealous. So I want, I'm trying to get it, my point across like, look, I know I'm telling the truth. And I know that this person is lying about this because I've already heard from someone else that she ended up dating that just the world's so small that that person is kind of close to me in a sense. I don't know that person, but the relationship is close to me that she is still, she's lying about everything. Right. Yeah. So it's like, that's why I say the, I, th- I feel like I still say that. Well, I know I was jealous because I want to let everybody know that I am telling the truth. Well, about let's, bring this shit. let's bring her on. Let's bring her on. And David, David's going to do <laughs> nah. work his magic and she's pro- he's probably going to change her life. <laughs> She'll lie. I mean, I can't change people's to, lives to man. hear, to hear the shit that she was lying about too, to this person. Well, what was the most like egregious lie? Um, I know which one you're trying to make me say, but I'm not gonna. Say no, it. I'm not gonna. Okay. Say, no, no, that um, I wouldn't say. Okay, but um, nothing like even. But it's scandalous. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's one shit. Like one of the ones was like she told this person. The person finally confronted her about me because she had supposedly told this person the, the guy that she was dating. The new the guy. The new that guy she was she dating. Was dating. Gotcha. She told this person uh, that. She didn't have any relationship off outside of her ex, right? There was nothing. World small. He finds out that there was a relationship and it was with me. So he confronts her about it. This is what I hear from this person, right? So if this is true, I'm not sure. This is what I was just told. And I'm never going to talk to her to get her side of the story because I could give a fuck what she says. Um, that she told him, okay, yes, we dated. It was small. Uh, we broke up in the beginning of September, so I tell the guy, I'm like, oh, in September, that's weird. And he's like, why? I'm like, because at the end of September, I took her to Arizona to visit all of my family. So that's oh, weird shit. that we mm. stopped. We broke up in the beginning of September, but I, I still brought her out to Arizona to meet everybody, right? And I told him, I'm like, no, we broke up in November. That's when we broke up. Because I remember, because I was excited, like, oh, look, I'm going to be able to bring my girlfriend back home for Thanksgiving, but we broke up in November. So I'm like, oh, that fucking sucks. Cause there goes that plan. Right. Um, and then that was the last time I talked to her supposedly was in fucking uh, September. And I'm like, that's weird because when my client died, she was talking to me all the time. I mean, she went to my house and she made me some cool little thing with my clients like picture in it. She left it on my door, right. In my car door. I'm like, that's, that doesn't seem like, I mean, that's January. So September. And I was like, and I have text messages and his, the the other person that was there started reading the text messages off to the person with the date. I'm like, this is March dog. This isn't September. So I already know that she's lying about the situation. And I know she's probably lying about it to a fuck ton of people, but I think I'm getting to that point where I'm kind of like, all right, I don't give a fuck. Is she still with the other guy? I don't, I would, I don't know. Um, Cause if she is, dude, she's a wizard. I yeah, think she's, she's good at what she does. Fucking wizard! Does like, you got to give her credit. Like, yeah. does her pussy have an extra set of lips that just <laughs> latches on to yeah. like your dick? Like, what the fuck is it that she has that has a spell over people? I don't know. It's because I think it's because she's attractive, um, and the, she's super nice. I think that's what it is. Because when you don't know her, like deeply know her, she's super nice, and that's very attractive. But, but, to but people. manipulative people will do what they do. Yeah, and that's you the heart. I mean? like, and and they man. know how. And I don't want to say this like. 
a lot of them, I don't want to say they're predatory, but a lot of them kind of are. Like they well, know they, they know who they could work with. They of course, know yeah. who, who they could kind of like. Uh, I mean, a lot of people get duped, duped by people who are nice because, and it's hard for people to understand this concept that nice doesn't mean you're a good person. Yeah, right. It it, it just doesn't. True. Yeah. Some 100%. people are just very good with their mouth. They know how to say say the right things. It doesn't mean that they're a good fucking human being. There are people now that I that I'm still friends with till this day. Like even Mariel doesn't get it right. Mm. Like I have, I have a guy uh, a homie out in Sacramento. She met this guy. She doesn't like him, right? She's like, oh, he's loud. He's kind of obnoxious. I was like, hmm. yeah, but he's a really good guy, right? And she mm-hmm. goes like, how? Like, he curses so much. But I was like, well, so do I. I was like, <laughs> I was like, the, I was like, <laughs> I was like same yeah. shit. I was like, the difference is, is that he's a good person. I was like, mm-hmm. good people are hard to come by. Likeable people are a dime a dozen. Yeah. There's a lot of likable fucking human beings. They know how to say the right things. They know mm-hmm. how to make you feel special in a yeah. conversation. Mm-hmm. But I always say too, like that guy, if tomorrow, if tomorrow I said, yo, man, uh, I need a place to stay. He'd be like, come over to my spot. Here's my keys. Stay here as long as you want. That's a good fucking dude. Yeah. He's that type of human being. And so she doesn't understand sometimes why I keep certain people from my past. Mm -hmm. I was like, because on the exterior, they're very rough. He's not the most likable human being, Mm -hmm. but he's a good fucking good like, person like harvey weinstein you know what i mean he's probably a very <laughs> likable yeah. person yeah huh? but I, he's I a likable dude i'm sure he, I, actually i don't know i've been yeah. proud of myself in the sense of the way i've gotten over it to now because like yeah. when i was first when well, it first happened honestly, I was like, like uh. rethinking about like the timeline like for some reason i just always thought it was like years ago but it was like it was maybe, it, no, maybe it like was. a year was, ago i though. think it was like Two years ago now, or something, but it's still kind of it's, like it's that. still very fresh. It was fresh, know? and but I just, that's why I also get mad. I'm like, dude, this shit was a long time ago, and I still think about it to this day. You know what just popped in my head? Just to just to go back to how like how this guy's such a good person, uh. but not really. <laughs> so when I when I was in um in college, mm. uh, I I made I had a still had a few bad habits of being very aggressive and angry. Mm. Uh, didn't want to be in this school at all. So. Uh, I had a problem with a lot of people who would front like they're fucking thugs. Yeah. I'm not a fucking thug, right? I'm not at all. But because I grew up in a bad near area, I know how not to get punked, right? Yeah. I know how not to get pushed around. So there's a couple of cats in college that they were, uh, they basically said that they rep this gang. It's a very well-known Asian gang. They don't. For a fact, they don't. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't be in They wouldn't be in this school. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so what the fuck are you talking about, right? <laughs> but they were saying they repped this shit and they were like, yeah, they're showing tats or whatever. I was like, this gang doesn't have tats. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Because it was an Asian gang. Yeah. Was, unless it said the fucking actual, the gang name on it. it you weren't a like, part of it. But he was showing this dragon tattoo. I was like, I'm going to fuck this kid up. He's not part of the Yakuza. Dog. Yeah, you know, he was showing a, a generic dragon tattoo on his arm. I'm like, that's not the gang. You yeah. know what I mean? That's just a generic dragon tattoo long story short these as they say would say back in the day they were trying to test my gangster yeah, i'm not a thug but i know when somebody else is a thug because i'm not one either and i grew up in a very bad neighborhood mm. i know the gang he's talking about they don't have that tat yeah so the guy was like long story short with this guy he was a, a buddy of mine um was living with these two girls. One girl was a bisexual. One girl was a lesbian. The bisexual made out with this guy and their lesbian relationship became a little weird. Lesbian girl decides to get this these two dudes to come and jump him at my friend's birthday party. Mm. So me, I'm, I'm trying to be in this peaceful thing. I actually joined a Christian group at the time trying to find Jesus again. Praise wow. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Ooh, amen. God, please bless my soul and uh-huh. hope you're uh-huh. going for me up there. Espiritu Santo. Espiritu Santo. So... Um, so <laughs> we were, we're chilling at this party and I told this other guy, I said, hey, uh, I'm just going to say her name is Debbie and Raina. So mm-hmm. Debbie and Raina, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck those bitches. Uh, actually, Raina was fucking cute. Um, <laughs> God damn it. She was, she was Raina. fucking cute. And she wasn't even the type of Asian girl. Like she had like a lip ring and she was like, like in this punk rock type of yeah. stage or whatever. Mm-hmm. So these two bitches, uh, one decides to get these two other guys. One guy's name was his name was Carl, and this other fucking loser, Carl, you know, Carl, right? Yeah, the Carl the thug. Yeah, yeah. and so he <laughs> tries. Knows Carl he tries to come and gangster. jump at him at my friend Sylvia's birthday. Adam's party. your boy. Yeah, mm. really nice guy. He's kind of awkward too, but he's nice. Um, and tries to jump at him at this point too. Oh, and two by the way, after this, Adam decides to join jujitsu, and he's hey. dope Ooh. as hell now. Um. He, uh, they try to punk him at this fucking, and Adam's a really nice dude. Uh-huh. And so this guy, Carl, tries to act like he's a fucking thug, small little Asian dude. Of mm. course. Runs up on him at the party. And then a buddy of mine had a butterfly knife. It wasn't mine. And I told him to give it to me. So I took the butterfly knife. 
And as he's like in fucking Adam's face and Adam's really quiet, mm -hmm. I literally grab him by his fucking throat and I put the knife to his neck. And, Yo, nobody give any weapons to David <laughs> when he asked so, for them, okay? And so like I literally put this fucking butterfly knife. This is not a fake story. This is 100% mm -hmm. true. You could even ask anybody in college because when this happened, I put the knife to his fucking throat. I actually didn't know that one of my friends at the school, shout out, her name was Yesenia. Yesenia's ex-boyfriend got stabbed to death. So when she saw that shit, she freaked the fuck out, started screaming and she ran out of the place. Mm. That shit kind of snapped me out. Yeah. And I kind of like took the knife and I gave it to somebody else. They chucked it, they put he it away. It dope though. Put it <laughs> away. Like, I can do a lot of tricks with that shit too. Yeah. Anyways. But uh, Dude, he, he who, got rid of the knife. Who are you bro? So he got rid of the fucking knife. <laughs> He got rid of the fucking knife <laughs> and I was fucking pissed. And my friend Sylvia, super sweet girl, Christian girl too. She went to this church called Harvest out in Riverside just mm. to add some validity just to the story. <laughs> so she uh, <laughs> she grabbed me and she held me. She goes, David, please don't do anything. Please don't do anything. I'm really calm. Oh, I'm sorry. Before this too, uh, I threw the knife and his homie tried to sock me in the back of my head from behind. And luckily I kind of caught it at the side of my, he missed. I swung like three times and I popped three holes in the wall. And <laughs> on the fourth one, I Bro. clipped him uh. and I busted his fucking nose. There you go. And um, <laughs> and Sylvia grabs me and she tells me like, don't do anything calm. I'm calm. I'm Sylvia. I promise you I'm good. I felt bad about this. This dude, <gasps> no. So, so Carl, Carl looks over. He goes, that's what I thought, bitch. And then I fucking chuck Sylvia aside. I grab Carl. I literally grab him and I chuck him so hard he flies through the fucking screen door. There you go. And it busts uh, through the fucking David? screen door. Mm. Carl's just trying to test your gangster, dude. <laughs> and yeah. then Carl comes up and he tries to get up and I crack him in the nose and I bust his fucking nose too. And I, at that moment, I remember this feeling because I wanted to sock him so many fucking times, mm. but because it was like you when you're kind of skinny, yeah. right? In that skinny face, when I first, he was like that size. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I knew that I'm a 250 so pound tiny. guy. Yeah. If I sock him in the face more than once, you I'm gonna go him. to jail. I'm gonna, yeah. Yeah, he's gonna yeah. get hurt pretty gonna, bad. He's gonna die. Mm -hmm. So I decided not Jesus to do anything. Christ. I sit back, I chill. <laughs> And they said, fuck you, I'm gonna get my fucking sorority boys or whatever. Yeah. I thought he was a thug, but now he's gonna get sorority homies to come at me. I was like, cool. We're gonna get Kappa Beta all, all over <laughs> you, dude. <laughs> so in the apartment, they had a bat. So I grabbed the bat and I sat on the floor. I was like, I'll be waiting for you. So I just sat at the floor waiting with the bat. But yeah. then all my friends grabbed me and they tried to, and they shoved me into a car and they took me to my other friend Annie's uh, apartment. And I'm trying to, the whole time, I'm trying to escape out of this fucking apartment so I could go back and I could just fuck them up with this bat. I was thinking about cracking their skull until fucking brain. Yeah liquid came out their fucking ears so can i say something real quick yeah all of david so stories always involve him punching a wall yeah, in I some see. capacity um some sort usually of a weapon. weapon yeah a weapon <laughs> so you know i'm sure there's a gun story yeah. somewhere i think you told me a gun story and the third one is there's always a sweet young lady trying to hug him to because not beat the fuck out of somebody because i hung around good people yeah. like yeah, i no, always definitely i always try to hang around good and people and they but knew you were gonna be a fucking star dude <laughs> they knew yeah. i was gonna be a fucking star i always hung around really good people because i i they were the people that i wanted to be so bad yeah. and i you know i used to get punked a lot. i used to get bullied and so because i grew up in such a bad area i i knew what i had to do so people wouldn't number one jack my shit take my fucking money or think yeah. i'm a bitch yeah so i always had to go to these like violent violent tendencies just to be like don't fuck with me yeah but long story short with that they they kind of kept me in the apartment the one of their sorority brothers came in a fucking motorcycle i heard <laughs> ripped out all three of them ripped out a stop sign and they threw it through my friend's apartment window so that fucking made me even more angry yeah. so i didn't even know i did this and david fucking, killed somebody dude i did not <laughs> but so like someone's dead because of david so, so i did this in blind rage and just to go back to the story of why i'm talking about this guy's a really good dude uh -huh. even though he won't sound like a good dude because of what he was about to do uh -huh. so he this guy was kind of thuggish yeah uh told this guy what happened he goes cool i'm ready to go i didn't even know ttg the right there <laughs> you know, hey you know what that mean right <laughs> Train to go, baby. Train to go. Get it. So I didn't action. know what was happening. About that action, Bob. But I, uh, he was the thug. I mm -hmm. wasn't. I was. Mm -hmm. He was a friend, and he was just always a good friend to me. You know, he was like I think he like lightweight protected me a lot mm -hmm. too. So I told him about the situation. He did an angry, cursing up a storm. I didn't even know. But four hours later, he was already in a car with like a few other dudes with body bags and a whole bunch of fucking cats so yeah. he was gonna murder this guy for me body bags and he was gonna murder this guy for me and bury this motherfucker for me and i didn't know that what i was saying because i was so fucking angry yeah. and i remember he called me he goes yo i'm about two and a half hours out and this is from sacramento all the way to la mm -hmm. and to riverside and i was like hey bro i need you to turn back around like it's not that serious he goes you sure because i'll move 
It's done. <laughs> it's done. Yeah. And I started getting scared because I'm like, this guy's going to murder somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> That's when the normal David yeah. comes out. I'm like, this guy's going to fucking murder. I've never actually told the story before. <laughs> does, does Mariel know that story? No, she doesn't. Well, she will find out now. Yeah. But actually, yeah, I never told the story before, but I got so fucking scared because they were going to kill somebody. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, when you grow up in a bad neighborhood, you just happen to be, I wouldn't say fortunate, but you grow up with other people who are thugs. And because I'm friends with them since we were younger, I just happen to be in their good graces. But, but can yeah. I say something though? Yeah. Those guys that did all that shit, they kind of deserve to be murdered. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so, they kind of deserve to like, if you're doing shit like that, and you're like wrecking people's houses and throwing stop signs through yeah, the fucking yeah. window, you know, window. And, and you're trying to pick fights with everyone and you're five two yeah. you kind of deserve to be wiped off the face of the mm -hmm. earth because the earth does not need people like that yeah. anymore because we obviously have enough of that because mm -hmm. that same guy is buying all the fucking toilet paper yeah. in oh, the area oh, ah. he's that same type of fucking guy you but know I like I mean? that because you knew that he was a good friend to have Mm -hmm. Like in that situation. Well, you know, he's going to have your fucking back. Exactly. Dude, no matter what. Offended. That's why we're still friends. Still this, I mean, he still has his like thug like tendencies. Yeah. But yeah. he's still a really, really good dude. He doesn't do that type of shit anymore because yeah. we're a lot older. Yeah. But just to go back, like a lot but of he, people. If he needs to, he could fucking John Wick yeah. some other <laughs> But, you know, just case in point, that's why I say he's like a really good dude. No matter what I needed, even mm. he knew I was a dweeb. He was yeah. like, yo, somebody's fucking with my friend because yeah. he thinks he's a little bitch. And now I got to handle this shit. Yeah. And so like. In that type of situation too, like I, I, like I just hated the fact. I knew for a fact because I was a fat dude with glasses and shit. That he thought mm -hmm. he could fucking punk me. Even if it was him and his friend. It was two yeah. dudes. Yeah. It's like, nah, you can't do that. Yeah, I grew exactly. up in a way worse situation. Yeah. So, yeah. but I like friends like that because, like, even for me, when I have homies like that, like I, I said once before, I know I have the good set of friends because. It's to the point with me where I don't care if my friend doesn't like somebody or if they have beef. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to fuck with that person either. Yeah. And that's just how I've always grown up in the sense of that. So like example, like if say Nick dated this girl for like two weeks and she's free and she won't, and I would never, that's off yeah. limits for me, hundred percent. Or if Nick just liked somebody off limits for me, that's how I've always been. And I, and I know that, and that's how me and all my homies are. And if, for example, like my friend, Nick, I have, Basically, two of my best friends in the world like are Nick and Thomas back in Arizona. I have a couple other friends, too. If they listen to this, they're going to be like, oh, what the fuck about me? But yeah. I'm talking about a, cer a certain <laughs> situation, right? We had two of my best friends, Nick and Thomas. We had a we had an old friend. I'm not going to say his name, um, but he went to jail, right? Did a bunch of shit, but he was really close to us, so we used to keep him there. And there was one point where he came out of prison and uh, what's it called? And he was staying at Nick's house and Nick's mom is, she's a G too. She's fucking awesome. She used to always let us stay at the house and do stuff. She let him stay there. Right. So she, knowing the situation about this, he was supposed to be going to do his shit. Right. Cause if you go to prison, you have to do checkups and shit yeah. like that. He stopped doing them. And we knew everybody knew that this person, he was back in trouble, right? Like he was getting looked for and all that type of stuff. The parent knew that as well too, but she still let him stay at the house, right? So this is how much we all were friends, right? How, or we thought. So Nick lets him stay there, all that type of stuff, all this shit, right? Later on, this guy goes back to jail, whatever. Maybe three, four years ago, three or four years ago, I go back to Arizona. He gets out and he's like, hey, I want to see you, right? And during this time, because he is a good friend and I, I usually, I like to be a good friend, right? He, he would text me or he would call me through there and I would send him money, right? And I didn't used to tell people that, but I used to send him money. Like if I could send him 50 bucks, 100 bucks, stuff like that. If I had more money, I would send him more money because this was my homie, right? But so he gets out again and he starts hanging out with everybody. And I remember going, talking to my friend Thomas and I was like, hey, yo, what, what's up with this person? Like, uh, have you heard from him? I haven't heard anything. He's like, oh, I never told you, right? It's like, what's up? He was like, so... Nick's mom, I guess, got home. Uh, the house was broken into. Oh. All of her jewelry was stolen. Damn. Everything was stolen. And I was, I was like, it was him? He's like, yeah, it was him. I'm like, fuck. So Nick obviously doesn't like him, right? So I already know Nick would do the same thing for me. Nobody fucking likes this kid no more, right? It doesn't matter. He could come and explain why he did it. And I know why he did it, right? Because he was in a bad spot and needed money. But it's like, I don't give a fuck. Nah, if, if, if Nick at the end of the day was like, Hey, we're gonna go do something with this. I would go with him, yeah. right? That's how I am, and that's because they're my. We've been through a lot of shit Damn, together. That's fucked up. But 
same thing with Nick. That's why I like having those types of friends. Like what yeah. you have is like, no matter what we're ride or die for each other. And that's how it always be. Um, but that shit, I remember when that shit happened, I'm it's, it's crazy. And that, and it sucks because I kind of brought that person around the group because oh, I sucks, was, yeah. I was friends with him. Yeah. Um, and so like, I was kind of like, fuck man, because we have such a tight knit friendship and I kind of brought this person in there and it was cool. Everything was cool. And then he fucked it up right at the end. Uh, but yeah, I, this is this is just a ramble story. But I was telling you, that that's why I like having friends like that. It's always yeah. good to have friends like that. I, I think like when you kind of grow up in a in, in a not so nice area, mm. a, a lot of the, a lot of the friendships that I've had growing up with a lot of these people who are broke, loyalty is all we have. Yeah, yep. that's all we got. You know, mm -hmm. there there isn't. I don't know, nice cars or any, all this other shit that, yeah. that kind of like people can relate to. Like yeah. there's nothing that we could share with each other besides our friendship and loyalty. Yeah. And so that kind of runs really deep. Sometimes it gets people in really, really bad trouble because uh -huh. they'll do dumb shit just because they're your homies, which I won't do. Yeah. But, you know. I, yeah, I should have rephrased that. Obviously, if Nick's like, hey, we're going to go murder somebody. Yeah, that's I'm not, not going to happen. Murder yeah, like, all right, damn bad. But I would always be there for <laughs> Nick and Thomas no matter what, right? Yeah, you no know. No matter what. It don't matter. If if something were to happen to Nick and they needed me out to Arizona, I would drop my plans, go to Arizona. If something yeah. were to happen to Thomas or even my other homie, Luis. And that's how I know they're true homies, right? Because I left. When I left, all the people that I thought I was friends, I don't talk to anymore. Yeah. And like a lot of people don't know my... Arizona to California story, but it was super unexpected. Like I fucking, I moved here on a week's notice. I told everybody on the Sunday before I moved here. Um, but I had all these groups of friends and then slowly over time, like all of a sudden everybody started disappearing. Everybody started disappearing. And I always tell people this to this day. I talked to maybe two to three people in Arizona and that's not an exaggeration. And I remember when I used to go back there, I used to try and force myself to like, Oh, I'm going to go hang out with these groups. I'm going to go, let nah. me go out. And it kind of turned to that. And I remember as I got older, obviously as getting older, I was going out there. My dad's excited to see me, right? Because I moved to a different state and I'm his youngest son, right? And I was barely seeing him. And <laughs> I remember spaghetti all over again. Yeah, no, but <laughs> I used this, to- Eat your this fucking <laughs> spaghetti. But I used to like not <laughs> see him any. I would go out there and see him for a day and mm. then just always just hang out with my friends. Yeah. And this is how I knew it. I, like I said, I had good friends because- they understood if I had to go out there and I started telling them like, hey, look, I'm going out here. I'm only going to be here for four days. I want to see my dad. I'm not going to see you guys this time, but yeah. I will see you next time. They had no issue with it. Yeah. Other friendships started just to fade away because of that type of shit, right? So it, it's stuff like that. But I, I like like hearing stories like that because then you know like people, it's always good to have those like ride or die friends like like yeah. you said not where you're gonna go fucking hit a lick or fucking go murder yeah. somebody or something like that but somebody and you know is always gonna be there for you and shit and that's kind of like and just to give reference to that story the reason why he came to i guess kill somebody was because <laughs> i i'm pretty i'm sure in my and when i look back at it, i'm pretty sure in my rambling i was telling him about him saying he was a part of a set oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. It, it, you know it was like something like that yeah because yeah. he wouldn't just come out and just start fucking off and people it's Definitely. just what yeah. he was saying i was telling this guy <laughs> that you were he was in a gang he's probably going to do something to you yeah, but, yeah. but in his defense he deserved it yeah for sure i mean the guy the guy was being a f <laughs> that those guys deserved yeah. it i mean he was also trying to punk this dude adam because he knew that adam wasn't gonna do shit at the yeah. time he was such Look, a fucking nice actually, guy dude. and by the way the, the the bisexual chick is the one that hit on him i know yeah. dude you know what do, bro. Man, yeah but then that girl that the fucking hot chick uh debbie no no mm -hmm. reina she's the one that that bought these two dweebs the, the two dweebiest fucking this Asian is my guys. muscle <laughs> yeah <laughs> to go jump this guy and it's like that has to be the worst huh like you're like oh fuck i'm gonna bring my homies they're gonna teach a lesson and then they get their asses <laughs> fucked they're like fuck dude, dude they get their asses fucked up by the guy dude. that looks like fucking hudson yang from fresh off the boat that you know has to be the fucking worst dude imagine I, I that's why I feel like I've always been nervous to fight because I'm like <laughs> fuck man I or talk shit like I try not to talk too yeah. much shit because I'm like Matt what if I go fight this person they beat the living well I'm in Asia of me. well I'll never fight somebody man I just fucking call the cops baby yep. yeah. that's how I do it Why but, style but we're just gonna hit a lick after this podcast for sure <laughs> yeah, hit, hit that lick bust hit that, that thing you know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. shit well guys that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain Podcast <laughs> fucking. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you need to work on your self esteem. Hey, this was good. I this was, felt like it was good therapy. You know? And you know what though? I think you're gonna get some good responses from this. Yeah, I think man. You're gonna get a lot of people like reaching out to Everybody's you. Everybody's like, this kid's a fucking pussy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think a lot of people went uh, through your situation. Yeah. yeah. But once again, like if I could just say it again, you gotta fix your self esteem first before yeah. you get into another relationship. I'm getting, because, I'm getting better. Yeah. I can feel myself being happier. I think happier I think with you are myself. Too, man. Happier with myself. Self respect, man. You need self respect. Yeah, self respect. Even though I did put on a little LBs, I am getting. Shit, I'm starting no to lift about, again. LBs I'm getting stronger. Matter. Um, feeling better about myself. Let me tell you so, something, yeah. man. Uh, I got together with Mariel. I was fatter than you. Uh, we're probably the same weight, but I had zero strength and zero muscles. <laughs> At least you have strength. I had yeah. none of that shit. Yeah. I, like, have you ever filled up a, zo a Ziploc bag with Jello? <laughs> That's what my body felt like. Nah, because I eat that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, <laughs> this wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. Uh, you can find Alex on Instagram at Alex dot G G F. Hey, my yeah. boy. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got Nick the Ear. By the way, both these guys are personal trainers. Uh, Alex specifically specializes in powerlifting. So, you know what I'm saying? If you check out his page, this motherfucker is strong. My boy is hell. strong, my G's. I'm yeah. a little but bit. He's very strong. So, in the comments below, talk about what a pussy he is. Yeah. Y'all come in that gym and show them hands, then, cuz. And yeah, then him up? over here, he's. Uh, strength training, conditioning, boxing, Muay Thai, and also he can do jujitsu. He just doesn't for yeah, some so reason. So you are looking for yeah, that for those uh, personal more. training. You got your boys over here. And during this quarantine, hit us up. I know a lot of people have a lot of fitness questions, and I know uh, yeah we are open for online coaching. So hit us up. Mm -hmm. We would love to help out as much as we can. Gang, gang. Uh, check them out on the Big Mad Podcast. By the way, there is already a Big Mad Podcast, just to let you know. So you should probably change that. Who oh, is okay. it? Uh, it's just called Big Mad and it's spelled the normal way. So, uh, oh, yeah. shit. Oh, yeah, 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 All right. Yeah, hey, yeah. we might be changing that name, though. Yeah. Hey, but thanks for having us on, too, David. We got yeah, show respect. Appreciate you, you guys. Know yeah, thanks, for, thanks for listening to us ramble for a fucking hour. Hey, and thanks and for half. listening to my story. I feel better because now a lot of people are going to know it, not just a certain amount of groups. I'm hey. like, fuck yeah. That's That's what what this is a big step for my boy, and I'm very proud of him. <laughs> Therapy, if you baby. guys could feel me, I'm fucking, I feel like I jumped into a pool, came <laughs> out of the pool and just put dry clothes over the wet clothes, dog. <laughs> just so you know. Part of what I was like, hey, we got to talk about your relationship. He started sweating immediately. He was like, yeah, I got to go to the bathroom real quick, though. My real fucking, quick. my gallon fucking hydro flask was filled up and now it's empty off of that one conversation. <laughs> All right, y'all. We'll see y'all next time. All right, bye. Peace.